Hello, everybody. It's Friday night once again, and that means weekender time. This week, Lloyd, Ben, Freya, myself jump into a whole world of horror, sci-fi, historic, and pulp action, bringing you the choicest picks from the week's tabletop gaming news. Also on this week's show, one lucky viewer will be in with the chance to win the Conquest Old Dominion starter set from store.ontabletop.com. Uh, if you want to find out more, keep watching. We talk about it during the show. Uh, but if you want a chance to win, pop a comment below, be a subscriber to the channel. And if you can give us a like and share us around, that would be great too. Otherwise, kick back, relax, because your weekend starts now. Hello folks, we're back with you for another Weekender, your weekly walk through the world of hobby and war oh. games. All that alliteration, Jerry. <laughs> Some reason I keep turning up, it allows me to express my inner poet that is nobody to be beaten down. It's terrible, really. As you do your impression of the baby son from mm. Teletubbies today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I am the screaming, burning baby's head in the sky that takes, <laughs> takes you through all of the news. Uh, this week, I've I've got Brother Lloyd with us. Hola. He's rare. All right, to peeps. Treasure every time you see him. Yes. Before he scuttles off again to do whatever clever things he's up to. I assume painting samurai based, based on Caesar's cartoon. Yeah, I mean, he has he has properly shamed you now. He so. does, yeah. He's yeah. hopeful, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I got a similar message from, uh, from one of the community members going, oh, what about you? Are you painting stuff I sent you for Christmas? And going, oh, yes, I, sure. I definitely have Samurai because three boxes hit me on the head this week when I was rummaging through up there. I've lifted oh, some of the three boxes yeah. of Samurai, smacked me on the head. Just <laughs> nice. <laughs> so reminder, you know. <laughs> Bus. Uh, yeah, that, that'll be something for another day. We can take a wander down memory lane of all the good times we had not painting our samurai. <laughs> that's it. Well, we didn't have a reason to paint them. That's yeah, that's very true. Come, well, come we had summer, some we'll reasons. Reason. Well, I've never had a reason to paint samurai. <laughs> yes, no, no, no. But now, now I will do. Anyway, we digress. Uh, this week, we've got a whole barrel of stuff to take you through, but. We're going to kick off, as always, with the most important part. It's the Indie of the Week. And this week, um, this week's Indie is a very small Indie. It's so Indie, it's almost not an Indie yet, but it is an Indie. <laughs> but we're getting ahead of the curve on this one. You'll see why, uh, because there's some interesting bits and pieces. Uh, so this is Temple West uh, out of Texas. Oh, Yeah. Like uh, one of those cowboys from the cowboy things, uh, and and it is a very very small. It's a two man operation. Just a couple of war gamers who want to do stuff. Oh right, that's um, cool. Nice. So they they were a year old little babies that they are um, in November last year. Oh, so right. a lot of this stuff that you're going to see isn't out yet but is coming shortly. But the mm -hmm. first year they spent doing what are called the Legends Pacts uh, for Relic Blade. Oh. Sean Sutter. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways you can get into the uh, the Legends Packs. You can buy the packs themselves. Yeah. Or you can get the individual figures. Nice. Um, so the packs are sort of little four thinged packs. I'm going to call them thinged because <laughs> they're not always people. Oh. Um, are these are these like the heroes that they wanted to play that Metal King don't currently make? Kind of, sort of. kind of yes. Yeah. Um, so every time Sean's done a Kickstarter, there's like a pledge level where people can have a miniature they want made. So right. so if you pledge at the, I would like, or not a miniature made, but a, a character made. So you go, yeah. I'd like to get a squirrel tree singing ninja. <laughs> and they go, yeah, fine. And Sean does a bit of artwork and then writes up the stats and makes the character cards. You can get the cards. You can have the stats. You've got everything you need to play. 
but they've never made a miniature. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And so what uh, what Temple of the West did was uh, get in contact with them and go, okay, I'd really like to do um, the miniatures for them. So if we mm-hmm. pop open the singles, you'll be able to see them. And, uh, and Sean went, yeah, that's fine. So these are all based on Sean's artwork. Oh, that's which, brilliant. Which that's means great. those people can now guess semi-official models. Porter um, McScotch. <laughs> you know, why nice. not? Why not have a Porter McScotch? Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting because Relic Blade is so heavily narrative and story based. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Sean, the reason Sean hasn't done sort of official models for it is because they're not part of his story. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, they're not taking the story in the direction um, that he, he envisaged. But they're, they're an interesting little side thing. So these can be used for Relic Blade or could be used in any other game you want, really. And you can see yeah. there some of Sean's, that's Sean's artwork from Porter sitting down the sculpt playing, it, yeah. and then the sculpt beside it. Uh, yeah. and, this is, and this is what they spent their first year doing, essentially filling in the gaps for all that's those people great. who get into mm-hmm. Relic Blade or um, uh, have backed the Kickstarters or possibly even have, have made these or got these models as part of the, the Kickstarter invented, but uh, they've had to find their own things up until now. Uh, mm. That looks hauntingly familiar. I discovered this. Was it last week? I discovered that this was from the Dark Souls game, maybe the week before. I had no idea. It does look Dark Souls, yeah. yeah. It's got that um, big head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Big head. Mm. It would be more Dark Souls if it was lying dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's true. You always put yeah. it on the floor. <laughs> He's wearing a uh, Star Trek comms badge as well. That's <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Beam me up. Over. <laughs> get, me, get me the hell out of here. I've died all the time. I'm not even wearing a red jumper. That's <laughs> the way to do it. Uh, They've got a lot of character. In yeah. These yeah. So, games, so far, wow. you can see there's about oh, 16, um, I think. And, and some interesting ones because obviously these were just people going, well, presumably this is either sisters or uh, a pair of people who wanted to be made up into mm-hmm. characters in some way. Because I've seen Mantic have done something similar in the past. Yeah. Um, and so you get these really unusual yeah, yeah. Uh, and unique yeah. characters that potentially games designers or writers possibly wouldn't have thought of because it's not, mm-hmm. it's not part of their vision. So they wouldn't have thought of putting something like this in. Uh, so it's it's great that people can actually get their hands on these. Um, that is a very cool idea. Unique yeah. games, and you can see there the uh, the little bit of fluff behind it, and the little bit of rules as well. So it's the hairy one. The hairy one. The hairy one. This one, Matt. The, yeah. the, yeah. the Trojan-looking ape. Yeah, yeah. I dig that. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That That's a distinct, fab. a distinct choice of head headwear. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I love <laughs> so, I love the blades on the hand. Oh, That's yeah. what I mean, makes it for if, me if, as well. If you're going to go punch daggery <laughs> with your your man yep, uh, then they always have twin blades. That way, the wind doesn't close properly. You can really inflict some heavy damage. <laughs> Imat has a devastating fighting claw. Uh, his unique ability, Sarcophagi, where he can pick up relics or treasures from within a range of three. Ooh. Nice. He around. He's not my favourite bouncing around person for stealing shit. Uh, that has got to be, where is he? There he is. Oh. For all for all <laughs> gadgeteer. gadgeteer. That's he bad. Has, he has got a specially extendable staff. Of course. Uh, like I suppose like the Acubrat from um, Dungeons & Dragons. Remember the old cartoon? Her, her yeah. staff would occasionally extend and a grappling hook, thus allowing him to leap about the place, um, <laughs> pogoing around and grabbing bits and pieces from wherever it is. Nimble. He's all about stealing stuff. I can't help but look at it and think he's breaking wind for extra lift. <laughs> I might, I he's might just, just at the peak moment. <laughs> <laughs> he is a dwarf after all. That's how you gain elevation and extra height. Frolf is the sound that his ass cheeks make when he... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that is a... Uh, Thing of beauty. I'm so glad you shared it with us. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you've just destroyed my brain. You've taken that too far. Yeah. Give on about PS4, you know, Ben. Picking the boxes this episode of literary um, techniques. And a couple of barbarians. Again, that uh, unusual fest weapons. I would like to imagine he doesn't have any hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Flipping Edward dagger hands, this guy. 
Mm, that's going to make going to the toilet very interesting. Yes. <laughs> go to the toilet. The whole process. <laughs> Wipe your backside after. It's just going to be an issue. <laughs> With just shredded toilet paper everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> These have all been uh, sculpted by uh, Stavros, who's done oh. stuff for um, Foot Sore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in yeah. the past, so. I like that's that. That's pretty cool. That is cool. Kind of like the martial arts moves, mm. arms kind of thing. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, I thought they were like ghost arms. I'm going to stick could, multiple arms. Could go either way, but I imagine it's, it imagines like, part <laughs> of the overall artwork. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of spirit. Thing going on. That's really oh, neat. I like that one. Yeah. Where are we it's there? Very cool. You're not telling us who this is. is no. Ooh. No, we just have to imagine who have the word weaver. What's this thing? It looks like a helicopter blade. What is that? The on the top left. That's I think it's just the it's like a bit of his top right. Oh, it's a bit of rope. Bit of yeah. rope lashing out. Yeah. Because it's got like little prayer runes and stuff on it. Things. All cool. that movement. Yeah. Like a yeah. stool. Or like a helicopter blade. In case <laughs> this arm here with another one. Oh, not wow. able to get through doors. <laughs> go, go, gadget. And isn't that what we want to see? Yeah. That's a really nice little selection of stuff there. That's really yeah. cool. what, else yeah. they, cool what else do they do? Do they do anything other than these? Do they do other ranges of things? Yeah, so that there's a couple of others. Um, let's have a quick look at little it's dragon like masters. Yeah. These tiny dragony things are always good. Tiny oh, dragony oh, oh. things. Mother yeah, of that's... dragons. Yep. Yeah. So if I kill that off and we go and have a look at Last Day's Survivors. Ah. Uh, which is by the delightful Ash. So this is a set of three. As you can see there, Survivors of the Zombie Apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Once again, based on the artwork. Um, at least one half of Temple West. Um, oh, that's awesome. Has, has Worked or is friends with Ash uh, via nice, confrontation, yeah. which we'll get to in a little bit. But you can see there the original artwork and then the uh, gun tooting waitress. Yeah, yeah, that's fab. And I quite like the rockabilly look. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> that hair is fantastic. <laughs> it just screams uh, Billy Joel. Yeah, it does a bit. Yeah, yeah. it's looking for an uptown girl that wouldn't attempt to play. <laughs> but if ever there's a character that you need to have on a, a tabletop, it's a luchador with a shotgun. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, could, you could drop him into a game of Batman as well. Yeah, yeah. you could actually. Yeah. With that look. Yeah. Why not? That's really cool. That's a, I, I like that they've they've gone with this idea of we'll try we'll try and fill in the gaps yeah. for, for games like doing mm. obviously the stuff for Relic Blade and this as well. So you can have some. You could almost have, use these as like iconic characters, sort of mm-hmm. come out as persona in your games and stuff. You run into them in your adventures. Ah, these are resin. And then the metal, last one, metal or resin, or are they uh, metal? Although metal, they do yeah. do some things in resin, oh, right. okay. um, or at least they're planning on doing some things in resin. So I, I cool. don't know if they've uh, got them out there in the wildy wilds yet. <laughs> uh, the other bits and pieces they do. Uh, well, we'll start with this one, which is out. And then we'll get into the stuff that isn't. I think that's probably the best way. So, is this like a recasting original, or is this like additional conquest minis? These are additional. So this one is based off uh, Paul Bonner's artwork. Amazing artwork, yeah. Um, yeah. Now, if this is America only, uh, there is a european you can get the link off the front page anyway there's a european company that does large miniatures and busts um are supplying these uh which means you won't get the card and you won't get the dice d6 hit point tracker or dice, it's just a dice. <laughs> don't pick it up guys yeah journeyman miniatures there you go. sorry don't worry the fact it's only uh 200 in the initial run presumably they will do more runs later on also i've already ordered mine on pre-order so it doesn't matter to me if you go there now i'm not going to miss out <laughs> So there's the idea that, that they're the making book. new miniatures for the sort of fan version of of confrontation. Yeah. Then. Is that the, so yeah. so one half of the uh, the I think it's Tyler and Kyle are the guys mm-hmm. who run Tem- Temple West, and uh, Kyle uh, got into confrontation after confrontation was no longer a thing, and he got into it by the Facebook group, uh, so the the confrontation nice. three point five, which was run by Ash, started by Ash, uh, and sort of. Had been sitting stagnant for a while, 
and um, and he got chatting to him and went, well, you know, can, could you make me a moderator and admin? I've got plans. I've I've got interesting things that we could do, and and it's kind of pushed it in America into being a sort of more thriving, mm. vibrant um, group. Uh, and part and parcel of that is things like this then that they've come into afterwards. So this is based on Paul's uh, stunning artwork. Uh, I can't wait to get that. That's I mean, I really like the face. I really like the facial expression. One of those usually looks so angry and aggressive. Uh, yeah, he's, that a, one's he's a, really different. He's a more placid, cow looking thing. He yeah, still mess you up, mind you. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't want to be on the opposing side of that. But I hundred percent will mess mm-hmm. you up. Um, so he's in pre-order. Actually, I think they've started shipping the American stuff. Um, the European is coming shortly. Nice. Uh, but there's a couple of other ranges, um, which we'll probably see better on the Instagramage. <gasps> so Clash of Spears, um, mm-hmm. obviously the initial Clash came out a year and a half ago, two years ago, mm-hmm. two years. Um, but for Rise of Eagles, uh, Stavros has sculpted command sets for three of the factions, so Dacians, uh, Romans, and uh, Spartacan uh, Slave Revolt. And... Um, and, so and these are official. Kind of, these are official. Um, nice. Let me. We'll we'll start with confrontation. So, the Minotaur oh. is based on Paul Bonner's work. Mm. However, they've also been working with Gary Chalk for Confrontation Continuum. Oh man, so, I love so, the work of Chalk. He's, he's amazing. Yeah. So this is going to be massive. Uh, they've been working on this for about mm, oh. six to eight months, maybe. Uh, and we're going to be getting a soon. That, I'm on that, like a cop That's on lovely. It. Look at the teddy bear on the side. That's fantastic. The current guard didn't have a standard, so I've got them all, which means I've got a musician, I've got a commander, I've <laughs> got the captain's guard, <laughs> but there was no standard bear originally from Confrontation. And there so we go then, yeah, yeah. Um, So they're also going to be, through the Confrontation community, <clears throat> stacking these up. So in some cases, they can be used for confrontation and, and things like the confrontation club, um, and they've got an app. So we talked about it previous weekend. Um, you'll be able to use these. A lot of this stuff is based on Cadwallon RPG mm-hmm. um, that uh, that uh, was illustrated and, and uh, done by Mr. Chalk. So uh, mm. it'll be fascinating to see where this goes. Some of these have hit the green stage. But there's a, a whole wealth of stuff, including that delightful character there. The, uh, the oh. head of it all. Mm. It's really nice because uh, yeah, because now nowadays, oh, but, but because of the the ad the 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 way that um, things have advanced when it comes to sculpting and creating miniatures, mm. all the art, all that detail from the artwork find its way into the range, which is yeah. really nice. So. Yeah. so they are working. There's Kyle Gibson. They are working on a beta rule for Confrontation Continuum. I don't know how far away that will drift from 3.5 and from what people are currently playing, mm-hmm. um, yeah. or whether or not it will be something that is is just a mm-hmm. essentially a, a new version for people who don't have the original rule books and aren't just looking for lots of erratas and PDFs to download. It'll just be sort of combined. Yeah. There's the legend himself. Oh. So, drawing away. But here we start to see some of the stuff. So they're planning on launching this sometime early this spring, summer. Right. I don't know whether this is going to come straight to the web store or go maybe via Kickstarter. But you can see that they've already got quite a lot of not just concept artwork done and illustrations, but they've they've got some of the mm. miniatures themselves sculpted. That's gorgeous, that. Oh, when you say launching, is it going for a Kickstarter or are they they, allowed Kickstarter? Like they haven't said, so I'm I'm not 100 percent certain either way. Um, Let me just get back up here to some of the minis. Because I would assume that obviously obviously they're not the holders of the confrontation license. They're not the holders of the license, which means I I can't imagine. But then currently, the holders of the license are are going through French court at the moment well, to yeah. try and explain why they, <laughs> they siphoned off several million pounds worth of people's yeah. money and pissed it up the wall. Mm. Um, so I, I, that's a sort of grey area. The fact that yeah. this is a fan-made stuff, but it's based on Gary's artwork, yeah. means it's, you know, that's fine. They can produce it and it could yeah. go to Kickstarter. Um, the fact that it's it's got the confrontation name attached, it's not just confrontation Confrontation continuum means they probably get right that way. Their, 
third yeah. party license. Uh, but oh, those are nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> so Stavros got cool the original bases. ones oh, yeah. for the original Kickstarter and they were scaled to match Vitrix. Yeah, yeah. I imagine these are exactly the same since he's done the sculpts on these as well. Uh-huh. Um, these, the masters were produced at the start of February and are due to come onto the website for sale shortly. Um, so hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Those are um, very good. People will be able to get yeah. their hands on them. So you've got your Germanic command, you've got your <laughs> Dacians, uh, you've got your various um, commanders, heroes, standards that you need when you're playing the game. And of course, if you're getting involved with the Spartacus Slave Revolt, uh, if you want to do your, oh, uh, wow. you want to do your Servile awesome. Wars, then you can get some gladiators. And finding good gladiators in 28 mil is a quite hard because most side. of them are really, really old. <laughs> Yes, they have a very really yeah. chunky look to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I really love the I love those oversized helmets. Most of them are old yeah. foundry ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you know why they did you know, know why they put those helmets on them? It's because they didn't want them to be able to see as much, right? Uh, because <laughs> they because normally what would happen is you'd have a gladiator who was heavily armored like yes. him, and mm-hmm. then you'd have the other one with the net and the yeah the, the fork, and because they, they the other were guy was heavy, to fight. Yeah. Yeah. Because the other one was heavily armoured, they wanted to give him a disadvantage, and so that's why they gave him that horrible, huge helm with all the little holes in it, so he couldn't really see exactly what he was looking good at. Good luck! Yeah. <laughs> that, well, you know, that in and of itself is is good, clean family fun. Oh, they're doing stuff for Daniel Mercy They are doing well. stuff for Daniel Mercy. Oh. Um, Getting some noises out of Ben this section, we yeah. are. <laughs> oh my god, those pig Arthur models are nice. <laughs> anyway. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, so this guy... Uh, goblin samurai, obviously, to match him with the goblin samurai and, yeah, and yeah. feudal ninjas that uh, that came out for confrontation. So that's always good. But you were saying, are they resin or are they metal? Um, this one is specifically going to be cast in resin that's because nice. he's top heavy. And yeah, yeah. And you know, if he did it in metal, it would be a, a pain in the backside to all yeah. concerned. So I think they're choosing the material based on how beneficial it is it's not just the case of we're doing everything in metal where there's a reason to do something in resin they'll do it in resin and yes you did spot they are working on the knights of the round table <laughs> um these are due to launch in spring as well so if, uh, i think a few weeks away uh there's going to be 15 of these nice and dan has been advising on the concept art so they have a more historic feel with a slight fantasy twist. So it kind of works for several of his rule sets. So he's done yeah. Arthur and Merlin. He's done Dragon Rampant and Lion Rampant. Yeah. Well, we're getting, getting, the new version of, getting the new version of Lion Rampant later this year as well. So. Yeah, Lion Rampant 2 is on. Are they today. updating Dragon Rampant at the same time or is it coming later? It may come later, if at all. They're doing a sci-fi version later this year as well. So. Oh, Are they? Wow. Yeah, they're doing Xenos Rampant. Xenos Rampant. Oh, the yeah. details. So there we have... Uh, Mr. Arthur King. That's really cool. And Gwen. Hey, go oh. back go back a bit. The King Arthur guy, he looks a lot like the he looks a lot like the guy from Indiana Jones when he's in he the He does the Templar. <laughs> yeah. 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 That makes sense. Wisely. Poorly. <laughs> Merlin. Merlin. Oh, Merlin. that's a nice Merlin. I can't say Merlin without trying to do it like John Hurt now. That's the- <laughs> right. Merlin. <laughs> Although my favourite is still the Sam Neill version. So. Oh my God, really? Yeah, I love the Sam Neill version. It's amazing. <laughs> not, not the Merlin from Excalibur? Eh, uh, nah. Eh, yeah. uh, uh, uh. I like the Merlin just said. from Excalibur. That's what I just That's said, my Jerry. favourite Merlin. <laughs> Nickel, Nickel Williamson is probably the closest to be born where Merlin was from. Uh, my my favourite Merlin's from the Disney movie. But, good. but good there Merlin. we have, that, that was like the initial... <laughs> the initial release for the knights of the round table Ooh. so so you've got all the knights there you've got looks like mordred and morgana yep oh man that's nice i particularly like assuming that that is the lady of the lake and i imagine it would be she's carrying a sword but the veil on her is really yeah nice to that's yeah. Really oh it's cool, a yeah. veil i thought she was coming up out of the lake and someone had chucked their flipping <laughs> dish wagon and she'd just come up <laughs> under it 
Oh, no, really, really unfortunate. Loving <laughs> 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 scimitars is no basis for democratic society. Like <laughs> being is seriously bad here in this point. <laughs> yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, so, like so they're only a few sort of weeks away as well. I am on board. And, uh, and oh, there's, there's that dude here. Yeah. Um, I love his belly. Yeah. Really oh, yeah. Belly all, much more all here. Of, I love they've all got the really awesome chin whiskers as well <laughs> uh, based on Gary's Gary's artwork yeah. which I am 100% behind <laughs> really oh, awesome range that's yeah. great yeah so like I say the, what they have out already is the, is the Relic Blade stuff and the mm -hmm. uh, Minotaur and the Survivors from, from last days mm -hmm. but they have big plans this year with Daniel's range the Clash stuff and uh, Confrontation Continuum mm -hmm which they have been working like madmen behind the scenes, getting everything sort of prepped and ready. I was going to say, this is crept up on detail. me, yeah. yeah. So. I've, I've been spamming F5 on the site <laughs> on a semi-regular semi basis since I discovered this last year. Yeah. It's like, faster, 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 now please, now please. But yeah, uh, an interesting little um, Very much slice so. into a, a company that's, so fresh smell the new smell of all their molds and miniatures uh, but definitely I think people should take a look at them and sort of get ahead of the curve on this one um, yeah yeah because it, yeah. It, it, it seems to be really rocking in there and the guys themselves um, from the, the bits and pieces I've heard from them uh, Kyle was on the uh, Dead Games podcast uh, sadly stopped at the moment but it was really interesting listening to him talk about, you know, just the, the fact that there were a couple of guys who just really like gaming. And that's the only reason Temple West exists. It's like, really like Passion these games. Driven. We want We want the miniatures for these games that we're interested in, and we can't get them anywhere else. And then they've just started, you know, reaching out to various people to fill in the blanks or to add to ranges or in one case reinvigorate a, a whole game system with a, a bunch of new figures as well oh, fantastic idea Just, you know so there we go if you're interested check them out if you're not interested how very dare you but you'll find out more because <laughs> i will not let this one rest anytime Who, who's your favorite out. merlin as well there we go <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well clearly everybody's going to say it's nicole williamson <laughs> from excalibur <laughs> you Oh, Sam Neil. child. Sam Neil. <laughs> Sam, Sam, Sam Neil can't even pronounce Maeve, for God's sakes. Yeah. And he's from Northern Ireland. He should know. Oh, he should not be pronouncing no, Meb. It's, it's definitely the one from the Sword and the Stone, the Disney movie. He's he is the most good man. epic good man. magic jewel with that witch. With that witch, that is the most amazing magic jewel ever caught on camera. That's that it. True. Nothing's come close since. Not even, nope. not even the Scarlet Witch. And, no. Uh, nope. What do you call him? Doctor Strange. Detention. Nope. Not a single snake in a basket there anyway. <laughs> anyway, we're going to have a quick swish, and when we come back, we'll be looking at this week's news. Coming to you from the centre of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh you love. It's the Muck News. <laughs> so, uh, diving back into some news from the tabletop gaming world. Um, we're starting off with the folks at Parabellum War Games who have been working away on the newest faction that's available for pre-order right now on Store on Tabletop and across the world. But anyway, Store on Tabletop. But yes, uh, we uh, have the new faction, the Old Dominion, arriving on the tabletop soon. So you've seen Parabellum deal with uh, sort of fantasy factions like orcs and humans and stuff in, in the past releases. But now they're turning their attention to the undead and that's where the old dominion come in uh, there are a couple of characters leading the way for this so you've got the archie mandrite which is the fellow that you see there which kind of ties back into this weird sort of cultish faith that they have within their uh, their faction you've also got the ziliarch which is their slightly more martial leader uh and this kind of like goes into an interesting sort of sort of segue as sort of how the old dominion works so they 
obviously sort of raise back former heroes from the death in order to fight and things like that. But a, gra- a vast majority of their forces don't actually really remember who they were. So they're kind of just shambling warriors effectively. And then you have slightly more that have remembered uh, sort of key military strategic information and all that kind of thing. And then you have the likes of the Ziliarchy you see here who have retained a lot of their personality and everything that they walk when they walk into battle and things. So they are, whilst they're under the sway of those sort of necromantic figures in the shadows that have raised them all back from the dead, they are still sort of like a, a force onto themselves and they can mm. almost cause problems for those higher up the chain on the hierarchy, which is pretty cool. Um, you've also got the Strategos. Uh, so this is the limited edition version of it that's coming out with the uh, initial <laughs> release of the Old Dominion. Uh, so a very cool miniature. Again, sort of working down that sort of path of Ziliarch of a slightly more martial fellow leading the way there. Um, I really like the aesthetic of that kind of ancient Roman armor. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got sort of like all the decayed flesh underneath it. The other thing that's really nice about this is because of all that, a lot of them are wearing their funeral sort of helmets and face mm. masks and stuff. You get that really cool thing of like, this is how they looked in life almost, but sort of sculpted in a weird uncanny way. And then underneath it, you've got the weird rotten flesh and everything. So it's a really interesting way of doing sort of zombies and the undead. And again, it's sort of parabellum approaching a traditional fantasy faction as it were, yeah. and doing something a little bit different with it. Um, in addition to that, you've also got a lot of the uh, rank and file stuff. So you've got the legionaries there um, again, sort of harking back to what I was saying, the, they have kind of retained a lot of like, the fact that they were soldiers in their previous life, but they don't have much more beyond that. So they're still as regimented, as efficient as you would imagine a Romanesque soldier to be. Um, this set can also be built as Praetorian Guard, who are slightly more, have slightly more personality to them. And again, have this really awesome sort of look and feel to them. Uh, and, and yeah, like epic, amazing undead Romans. Uh, I was almost weirdly rem- <laughs> reminded of the Roman pilot that they found in the Aquila craft in that old TV show, you remember. But anyway, that's that's that's, <laughs> that's from that's from BBC back in the past. But anyway. uh, there's also a couple of other sort of rank and file units. So there's the Moroi and the Keres, uh, mm-hmm. which um, exist within the starter set, as you can see there at the back. But we haven't got nice, pretty pictures of those at the mm-hmm. moment. I, I will make sure to show those off in lovely, gorgeous, full colour and painted glory when they arrive uh, but this is a good sort of entry point for people diving into play uh, it contains everything that you'd need to play as the old dominion you've got the all the troops you'd need um, you can use it for last argument of kings but you could also use it for first blood as well if you wanted to do the skirmish game at the same time mm. everything you see there is based uh, to use within both games effectively and as I say all available over on store on tabletop if you're trying to go and pick it up some really fun stuff there. or if you're really lucky you could win one you could Ooh, also win yeah. one yes by commenting on this episode which yeah very cool yeah. be lucky it's on a, that it's, like- a bit, it's a bit like Romans meets Egyptians yeah uh, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're Koopish like sword there is the shield, more Greek. yeah and the shield's almost a, a bit beetly looking <laughs> mm, yeah they've, they've an interesting thing where the more they are the less they are um, yeah. In that they are very, <laughs> if you take a big unit of them, they're very shambly and terrible. But if you imagine there's so much life force to go around or so much magic to power them, uh, and that sort of gets redistributed. So if you start with a big block of 24 or 36, and then it gets whittled down to like 12, the, the 12 that are left are as effective mm. as maybe the horde that started. Very cool idea. Because they, yeah. they sort of pass the essence along on the left-hand side. Yeah, they remind me very much of there was a faction for a game called Godslayer years and years and years mm-hmm. ago that did the kind of undead Roman thing. Uh, and then since then, I don't think anyone's ever really done something similar to that. So it's really cool to see Parabellum sort of approaching that and doing it this way. Uh, although this obviously won out over the faction that I think everyone really Greeks. wanted, which was the Greeks, yeah. <laughs> so, do you think any they'll, of they'll them... Be coming soon. They'll be coming do you think soon. any of them have just woken up with their memories and gone, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't handle this. Please don't go <laughs> off the front line. I have memories. Weird, weirdly enough, that is something that they've talked about with things like the Strategos and things. They're like, yeah. why have you woken me up? And they mm-hmm. like feel like immense sadness and 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 all that kind of thing because of the fact that they've been resurrected from their slumber and now Mm -hmm. the world is not what it was and stuff so it's very cool unless they were having a nasty dream while they were sleeping (laughs) thank you i was having a well nasty one last night was screaming in my sleep because it was trying to kill me the clown i was well happy to be woken up I had, I had a dream a couple of days ago. I, I, you know, I was trying to do unboxings and Warren and Justin kept getting in my way and I was freaking out. And every time I went to pull something in front of the camera, one of them would put a hand in or something. I don't know, just like, I'm, I'm losing my mind. 
And this was all taking place in my primary school. Oh. <laughs> it's like a tiny little desk. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is what my world has become. Yeah. But yeah, oh. cool stuff there for the old Dominion. We mm-hmm. want to dive in and, you know, take your mind off all the nightmares that you're, you're facing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a good way. And it's a, yeah. it's a very interesting faction because you've, you've got a, an almost combined arms sort of feel in that you've got a very militaristic side and you've got the mm-hmm. priest side and then you've got the deities, yeah. essentially, and you can have any at all of them in your force if you go for the more balanced bits of everything um you can obviously do very well if you want to focus on something a bit more if you want to go full on for the ethereal priesthood um you can do that uh, and and have some very interesting options for the tabletop but obviously then you'll find you might be missing uh, some some strength in other areas so i like it that it's not just a plow forward shambling horde army uh, it's not going to be one where you need to have five times the amount of models on the tabletop as your opponent does to actually make it viable. <laughs> yeah. So it's always good. Sticking with the dead. <laughs> three. How do you guys hold up with horrors? Are you good with horrors? I unless, like, unless, like unless, unless it's it, then I'm not very good. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> there's, there's a video game called Dead by Daylight. Have you heard of it? I am aware really of Dead is. by Daylight, yes. <gasps> if anybody hasn't heard of it, it's a game where players team up to survive a lockdown not the lockdown we know <laughs> with a killer who wants nothing more than to see you meet your sweet end okay so you got locked down in the vicinity there are generators generators of power to get out the exit and they're scattered across as players will work in teams and take them down they're loud they're not stealthy and when you've got a killer wandering around around you whistling at you or ringing bells to become invisible the experience on the video game was far too savage for me i i yeah i just couldn't i like my experiences with outlast i spent most of my time hiding in cupboards um <laughs> so dead by daylight was me going to my teammates over the mic yeah i'm good in here thanks guys yeah no problem so this game that I'm too petrified to play mm. my video game, is heading to the tabletop. And it looks like it's going to allow me to take a step back from the less personal view of I'm going to get hooked up on a spike mm-hmm. and deal with a strategy. they actually and dy- made the miniatures do, which is cool. Yeah. <laughs> and deal with the strategy yeah. and dynamics from a clearer perspective with, oh, no, my character might get hooked up on a spike. I'm, not, I'm going to take the personal out of it because I'm not there living it. So <laughs> Level 99 Games are teaming up with the Dead by Daylight studio to produce this title on the tabletop with hopes to release for Halloween if crowdfunding is achieved. So Ooh. it's heading to Kickstarter on the 29th of March. There's going to be two different types of pledges. There's going to be a standard edition, which you can get for $49.99, or uh, that's going to have six different killers, seven different survivors, and two different maps to go into. Mm-hmm. And there's the more so pricey, spicy collections edition for $99.99 with 16 killers, 17 survivors, four different maps, and all of them are taken from the game and DLC. So to help players in the actual video game, there's offerings, add-ons, and items scattered around to help them escape. So, Mm -hmm. and it's not easy to escape, it really isn't. So I'm hoping that we're going to see these benefits added to the board game as well, because I can see a card drafting mechanic might work really well here as well. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Unless you're skilled enough to get out alive, the personal goals of each member is to just survive, really. So whether that be collaborating with other players or focusing on your road route to success, I think that will translate really well to the tabletop. And Mm. I think because this video game is not completely narrative-based, there is one goal, there's one thing you've got to do, you've got to get out. I think this translation over to video to board game actually works really well and provide a different experience so that's not it when players are running around in a frenzy trying to stop themselves from being hooked up one player is going to play as the killer so each survivor has got different skills and abilities to get them through savagery and the killer has got his own ways of deception to meet their own goal. So they've oh. got to stop the survivors from surviving. Um, <laughs> I'm really I'm really interested in development in this title. Oh, I'm, I'm too much of a chicken. I'm too much of a chicken to actually be able to hold my own in the video game. So I can <laughs> see the mechanics might translate over quite well. So That's as I said, good. card items... Yeah. What was that, Lloyd? It's an awful lot of tokens on it, though, if you bring up the this picture. Is, this is what I was thinking. So I was thinking maybe cards for items or maybe tokens for items. You might have damage tokens for weakness. My my, um, my gripe is just looking at this just off, just fresh looking at noise. Yeah. It took me a while to even realise there was pictures of locations in those boxes because they're all covered up. 
Yeah, with fluffing with tokens. The tokens. With the tokens. I suppose that will develop over time, won't it? So I presume this is going to work turn by turn because it is quite the frenzy on the video game. You're working with them at the same time. So it would make sense for the four to go up against the one in turns. I don't know how yeah. it will work. I how think soda, the- soda's going to be really weird. The, the way that I would, I would imagine it will work then, I mean, obviously I'm just... Yeah, yeah. The gear. But I was imagine that each of those locations has little tokens on it, and then above you can see exactly what you put into the squares. I'd imagine those are going to be skill tests that you'll have to do in order to turn on those generators I, and, I, and stuff like that. So that's, I, I've that's never cool. played the game, but have you any idea what all the sneaking and the crouching and yeah, the so, flying is about? So when you're playing, there are multiple generators on the map. Mm-hmm. You need to have three of them on to power the door to unlock the door. Yep. And you need to do a skill check, which takes time to to power on a, a generator. Oh, so it's a location you're escaping from. Yeah. Yes. So it's you're not, always within like- a a killer's. That's called they call it killer shack or something like that. They, they, but you make it like a, a. They're all heavily themed on horror films. So you'll have right chainsaw massacre monster, type you'll stuff, have that kind of stuff. There, yeah. You'll have Bubba and all. <laughs> so oh, the killers are all themed on famous horror people, and then obviously the the backgrounds originally the the, the areas you're escaping from were generally themed to them in some way so maybe you get like the nightmare on elm street street mm-hmm. and that sort of thing recent um recent skins they've added recent areas they've added have been a bit more weird and wacky there's like a deserty looking place they've with done the, the stranger where, stranger where, things school and stuff like that yeah, yeah. with the, the upside down so yeah. things floating around um but there's some other there's other mechanics in it so you can get equipment like uh, a light that you can shine in the killer's eyes, which will temporarily blind them. Ah. You can get a toolbox <laughs> that helps speed up repair. So yeah. I imagine equipment like that, and then every time you get hooked, you take damage and it slows you mm-hmm. down. You can only take three hooks before you're killed. I imagine the way the mechanics work is the killer can't run. They've got special attacks, but they can't really run. But they move faster than a general walker, so they will eventually catch you up. If so they, they shuffle you. fast. Yeah. And, and Mike Myers <laughs> kind of way. He never runs, but he's always right behind you. <laughs> if there's, if it's like a four player, five player game, I would imagine if the killer activates after every player, that would allow them to no. pick on someone. And even though you're off in the corner starting a generator and they're running because. The main the main gameplay is if they don't see you and what you're up to, then you could be hiding in a corner for the entire game or literally mm-hmm. hiding in a cupboard. Uh, you can't do this here. No, you cannot. You've got full aerial look at what everybody's up to. So it'll be it'll be interesting how they manage to convey that. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah. the the chase escape mechanic because you get it could be really cool you get lots of people will kite the um the killer so there's yes. lots of running upstairs <laughs> then jumping off the balcony and then the killer's having to slowly i think i think you. that's what those lines are i think they're different maneuvers you can do then some of them will be louder than <gasps> others which might draw the killer or you know you might get moved certain directions that kind of thing yeah because you've got like the, the the blue ones look like stealthy yeah and you've got leaping and stuff so and i would imagine yellow, those are good and then yeah. running in the green yeah. That blue one does look like thing. a middle finger to me. It's interesting. That, I mean, a, a survival horror game on the tabletop uh, or on in a board game fashion. Mm-hmm. It will be interesting how they, they translate it. They've um, they've because, done it in the they've done it in the past, sorry, with uh, yeah. Friday the thirteenth. They did yes. a they did that, but they did it as a hidden hidden movement game. So like, you didn't know where the killer was, and so it was almost like a uh, a flip reverse of things like yeah. um, Whitechapel, where you're hunting the killer. In this case, the killer's hunting you. And so you have to try and escape from them and run around the map and things. So it will be interesting seeing how that translates into an entirely different yeah. style of game. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, well, if you want to keep an eye on, if you've mm-hmm. not played Dead by Daylight, uh, yeah. you should definitely go and have a go at it. Yeah. Uh, it's good fun. <laughs> Don't play a killer I first, play a survivor. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to play a survivor the first, if you're actually brave enough, do try and get out of the cupboard. But I, I wasn't brave enough. I wasn't and remember, well. if you are playing a killer, it's always fine to camp people in the basement, regardless <laughs> of what everybody else says. Just tunnel them. Put them in a hook in the basement and then tunnel them until everybody else dies as well. Okay. They'll appreciate it. Yeah. Right, away from Dead by Daylight. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well... Talking about nightmares for my youth. <laughs> v, yeah. 
So uh, going from a sort of, as you say, like a, a cult horror to a cult show, I guess, maybe. Yeah. Um, the folks at uh, Crooked Dice um, have created a whole bunch of new uh, alien invaders and resistance fighters mm. for use in 7 TV. Now, I didn't oh. know where these were from. You didn't uh, know? No. no. no All I'm going to do is this. Oh, oh look, he's, he's eating, a, eating a mouse. <laughs> That's it. Big rat. Oh. <laughs> but as 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 people in the comments immediately admonished me for these are from the as some people have said absolutely terrible other people no. have said so oh, it's, it's good brilliant. is it no. iconic or is it show. terribly iconic no, it's, it's <laughs> iconic there's no terrible about it it's classic, uh, classic this is TV from series. yeah this is from as, as jerry was saying v uh so these have all been designed so you can play you can play it you know your games out in a narrative fashion as either those alien invaders and some of mm-hmm. their their mooks and goons or you could play as their resistance fighters, trying to take back control of Earth from these surprisingly interesting uh, sort of visitors from another planet kind of thing. So, yeah, some really cool stuff there. Again, this kind of like flows into the idea that Crooked Dice just do amazing callbacks to retro stuff. Mm. Uh, what are you talking about retro? This is only like, <laughs> like four years ago. We had this conversation with <laughs> That's what it feels really like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's an awesome little range with some really funky looking miniatures with things really nice. Like, I, I love the, the design of a lot of them. I think they're really cool. I, yeah. I, I like the, the helmet and outfit design. Yeah, yeah. It looks really great. Although, like, looking back at some of the other retro stuff, it feels like they may have, like, at least made it feel a little bit more modern, I guess. <laughs> no, this is exactly no, what no, the TV exactly show is. Like. In which case, then that TV show had a pretty damn cool aesthetic. So yes, yeah. you know, it really did. Um, and I've just, I've just spotted Michael Ironsides there. <laughs> he won the resistance leaders. He was. Um, there you go. Yeah. He was CIA, and he was helping lead the resistance because when they, when the aliens arrived, they looked like humans. They're very far advanced. They start taking over the world's governments and helping. Well, clean energy for the future, sir. We can do that. And then it turned out they were actually lizard people on the inside. Dun, 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 dun. And the cameraman, he was instrumental in uncovering all that crap too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I can't remember actually, what he was called. I can't remember what he was called. The, the I actual, just remember Michael Ironside up in the hills. Yeah. <laughs> the he actually looks a little bit like Harrison Ford. Did. That does. You know, I know you'll, it isn't. You'll but, know him when you yeah. see him because yeah. he was in a lot of 80s stuff. Ah, uh, okay. The uh, other thing that's quite nice about this as well, like, I, I've only shown off the new releases there, but mm. they actually do the lizard heads for oh. the um, the alien invaders. The aliens. So oh. if you want to do them as full on alien invaders. Oh, go and find heads. out. I want to see the lizard heads. Go and see if we can find that. On their I, I will see if I can find the lizard heads. <laughs> uh, you <laughs> regale them with tales of V. Yeah, V's amazing. Like it's it's good, these what? voice modulation things blah, 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 sound weird, but they don't sound like that, but they sound weird. And then and then they eat giant rats and, a, and their throat bulges out as it disappears down in by the tail. Nom, nom, nom. Oh, so, sweet. So, so I've been told that... People had never seen stuff like this at the time. A woman eating a rat? Never seen on TV before. <laughs> so there's, a, there's an original series and then there was a reboot or something. Most the I forget the reboot. The Go original, for the original series original with the interspecies. Breeding and everything. Mm-hmm. Oh. Talk about interesting. The original, interesting. the original series was only, uh, it wasn't even a full series for American, you know, American TV is like 24 episodes long type of thing. Yeah. yeah the original about, series was less than that. Wasn't it about it was six still, or eight or something? Oh no, there were, there were still quite a few. Was there? I think over here it, it played out as multiple series. They didn't run it just as one. It was like first and then they halfway through, they always like have a mid season break in the States mm-hmm. uh, and okay. then it came back. I want to say Mid-season those break. are the heads. <gasps> those are the heads you're looking for? Yes, those yeah. are the ones. Yes. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Raga, raga, raga. Yeah. It's all good. In the hood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. V, very v cool great. Don't watch the reboot. Watch the original. Yeah, it was a bit cheesy in 80s and places, but it was really good. If you like They Live, and if you don't like They Live, why do you not like They Live? Oh, They you'll, Live. You'll, That's amazing. You'll really like V. Although it doesn't have Rowdy Roddy Piper. Which is you ever seen They production. Live? No, no. Oh. oh, you guys are missing out. Go and do that this weekend. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> Editor just include some conform consumer days. <laughs> yeah. Again, yeah, nothing to anyone. But yeah, some cool stuff there. There's a little bit sort of, uh, sort of left field, I guess, for everyone to dive into and check out and using your game to 7TV because it's a really yeah. fun game. So yeah. Stuff. Oh, definitely. Oh, mm. Find find use for them in other games if you don't play 7TV. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, be great really, for uh, Starcraft. Yeah. Oh, I, really yes. buy, I, I really want to buy their uh, Spectrum stuff. They're like Captain Scarlet. Models. Oh, Captain Scarlet. Really yeah. Cap, yeah. Captain Black is particularly good in that range. Yeah. yeah. SIG. Spectrum is green. Mundo. Mind Freud. <laughs> right. 
Free, take us away to some weird. Oh, this month it's March. That means we are have got new pre-orders from Weird Games. So this month we're to focus on a release schedule from Malifaux predominantly. So we've got new three new character boxes in line of the new keyboard system, keyboard keyword system, <laughs> uh, a new faction starter set, and the release yeah, of game. the second mm-hmm. print, a vagrant song. So the uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the character boxes first, and then mm-hmm. I'm going to head you on to the Neverborn starter set. So you've got the self-made set. So there's three different minis in this one, focusing on new ways to flex masters. So in this box, we've got three different faction models focusing on the Explorer Society, the Ten Funders, and the Outcast with Dr. McMorning, Sanitary, yeah, it's Lucas McCabe as well, and the Corpse Curator. So we've got the keywords experimental and wastrel for these ones. So the second box that's being released is all the world's stage. So you have got Nevermoon and Arcanists in the models for this one. So we've got a new Pandora model, uh, who is Tyrant Tong, Dorian Crow, and Colette Dubois, uh, smuggler, falling under the keywords of woe and performer. And the third and final box to release is Protected Domain with more Neverborn and combining Redneck Gobos from the Bayo. Titania's got a new model. As the Autumn Queen, plus Ulix Turner is on top of a very interesting mount, uh, the Portland <laughs> Protector, and the Erymanthian Boar, and you've got the keywords Pig, Suey, and Fae for those boxes. Nice. Right. Now the three Malifaux character boxes are out of the way. My favourite release, the Neverborn <laughs> starter set. So if you've been tempted by Malifaux and you've been put off by the small parts and assembly, these starter sets are your best way to try out the game because they require no assembly whatsoever. Way. None. <laughs> really, absolutely none. They're they're like one piece. They could, exactly. Your starter sets are one. Not so, even a weapon or anything to stick on. Pre-assembled, Lloyd. Pre-assembled. <laughs> so the box contains everything you need to get started in a faction-heavy crew. So everything inside is four miniatures, fake deck, general upgrades, markers, and your measurement tool. So... What's really exciting about this is I said that I've had so many people say to me they're really interested in Malifaux, but they don't like the finicky building and the assembly phases at all. You can dip into the Bayo, the Outcast, and the Explorer Society because they've all got starter sets released too up until this point. Nevermore has come out this month or is coming out at the end of this month. They include all pre-assembled models, so all we need to do is base and paint it, really. But you'll save a ton of time on assembly. So if you're looking in for a way to Malifaux, the starter sets really couldn't make it much easier. It's a great time to get into 3A with all the new keyword mechanics as well. So you've got your flexing keyboards to form a mismatch group um, all over the breach rather than a faction focus crew, which is quite cool. And as well as that, if you missed your chance to get on favourite song, the ball game, we'd have placed this puppy into a second print run. So you can get... <laughs> More of the haunted title at the end of the month as it's heading to retail. So very old school looking oh. cartoon movie game. Very nice. Yeah. Yes, it's actually, know. A, it's actually a campaign game as well, isn't it? That it's it like actually plays over a series of game books mm-hmm. and stuff. So yeah, I really. know that we had had uh, some issues getting Vagrant Song uh, sent over in the first mode <laughs> of the print run. There were some issues there, but it is nice to know that there is more coming. So if you did is, get a chance uh, to miss that one, it is Neverborn your faction of choice? Then is yes. that what you were waiting for? Yeah, yes, okay. Neverborn is my faction <laughs> of choice. Um, yeah, it's all of the dark and mystical fae and of woodland course. creatures come in the Neverborn mostly, and uh, cute and cuddly teddy bears. That look oh, oh so very and dark and redneck savvy, orcs so. on pigs. Well, redneck or yeah, bio is is great. Yeah. The, gremlin, the, the gremliny stuff is amazing. It's really oh, cool. Yeah. What I like about the starter set for the bio is that you can use the miniatures that are in the starter set for oh, yeah, the bio, bio bash. Chasing. Bio bash, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can use those ones either in Malifaux or use it as your character. That's brilliant. That's good. Cool. Yeah, in the nice. game, so pretty cool from weird. Very very cool indeed. No, Ben. Mm. Mm. Yes. Oh, my word. Speaking oh, of yes. cool. Reliving yeah. my wasted youth on this one again. This is just mm. a beating down memory lane for me. <laughs> <laughs> Nostalgia wake. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, Resnova Games, who a lot of people probably haven't heard of, actually. Uh, they have been working on a card game and stuff and doing some really awesome stuff with that. But... They have actually been working alongside Brian Steele, who a lot of people will remember from working on the likes of Dark Age and the like, uh, to bring back the world of Warzone. Uh, So you may remember 
way back in the histories of beasts of war we covered warzone resurrection from mm. rodos well that obviously fell by the wayside but it had been picked up as a little bit of a passion project by resnova games and brian Steele, uh, who's writing the rules and stuff in order to bring back the world of warzone to the tabletop now there's some, bit in, some, there's been some interesting things about this. So um, there's not much detail out there officially through things like their Facebook page and that kind of thing. But Brian's been doing videos talking about the development of this mm-hmm. alongside the folks from Resonova and talking about exactly the kind of direction they want to take it. So a lot of people remember that when Warzone initially came out, it was very much, it, well, at least it felt anyway from what I've been hearing about it, in the same vein as kind of like Rogue Trader in many respects. Mm. Small stealth skirmishes with maybe a handful of models, 20 at most, fighting it out on the tabletop uh, in narrative scenarios. That's what they want to try and get back to with this. They want to go back to those original roots of the first couple of editions of the game, bringing out a section of different factions that everyone knows and loves, like the Brotherhood, for example, there, as you see. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but amazingly cool looking, Phil. Um, Is that a lancer um, he has there? <laughs> that looks like a lance. I'll train some like guns. Like yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's all going to be played out on three by three scale, uh, three by three boards and everything like that. And they've also talked about like absolutely packing boards with terrain and all that kind of thing too. So it's going to be like a 60% coverage style thing where it's very, very heavily driven towards the narrative sort of storytelling element of the game yeah. as shouldn't opposed it, to. As shouldn't opposed, it, sorry, go on. Shouldn't it be called Skirmish Stone then? Skirmish Stone. Well, yeah. <laughs> Rather than Warzone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Technically, you're <laughs> true. Yeah. Skirmish Zone Eternal. Yeah. Skir- skirmish Zone possible sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so uh, they're going to be working on uh, bringing all of this to Kickstarter very, very soon um this year they have been talking about spring it depends whether or not things get sort of waylaid and everything like that because of world events and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. but they are trying to work on the idea of bringing the core rules to the tabletop for everyone to play with the rules themselves are going to be free to download so you can go and check them out you'll obviously be able to buy books and stuff in the future they're going to make all of the army lists separate and online so they can change them and tweak them as they go forward which is pretty cool the other thing they're going to be doing is they're going to be doing a set of plastics uh, kits for each of the different factions they're working on alongside um, sort of characters and that kind of thing. What's what? been floated around online is the idea of them using SEOcast as the kind of the method for delivering all this. Mm-hmm. So it's the kind of stuff that we've seen at the UK Games Expo and all that kind of thing, which is pretty damn good detailed stuff. Obviously, Infinity is using the same thing. I know Warlord Games are toying with, well, working with SEOcast as well at the same time now. So uh, they definitely playing around with it, uh, an interesting thing that can give very detailed models. Um, we saw the, the Blood Beret there, which was a very early concept render. But that gives you an idea of the kind of ways that they're trying to do this. This also brings me into the idea of the art style as well. So one of the things they've talked about is trying to preserve the art style and the aesthetic of the old games. Mm -hmm. So So when you say the old games, do you mean pre-Protos? I mean like first and second edition. So the target stuff from like back in the day. Yeah. So they're they're trying to take that aesthetic. And weirdly, we're talking about Paul Bonner earlier, Mm. trying to bring a lot of that sort of aesthetic through in the the miniature design, but then update it slightly. So for example, the Blood Berets there that you see, they should, they should have big shoulder pads, but not shoulder pads that could cut their head off if they shrugged. Because uh, as someone, yeah. as, as Steele said in the, the interview, he was like, you can never be sort of ho-hum about anything in Warzone because you just kill yourself. But, <laughs> but uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, they've also been, uh, they've also developed quite a community online for this. So there's a Warzone Eternal Facebook group that you can go and join at the moment, which is packed with people sharing all their old stuff and all everything like that. They've also said that while they're making all these new miniatures, the, their main focus is to get people to play Warzone Eternal. Mm-hmm. So they don't mind if you use your Protoss miniatures, uh, your old target stuff, anything, maybe even the stuff from Prince August, which we'll look at in a second. But if you want to go and dive in and play around with all these models, they'll all work with the system that they're trying to put together for you, which I think is really cool. Um, as I say, this one's very much coming across as a little bit of a passion project. And I know that Brian did a lot of really good work with Dark Age when it was with Simon and stuff, mm-hmm. and well, even before Simon actually. Uh, so it, it's, it's been really fascinating seeing this come to life. And I think it'll be really cool because the aesthetic of Warzone and the world and everything about it has always been really intriguing. Like I was really absorbed with what we what we saw with Warzone Resurrection, really enjoyed the game. A little bit fiddly in parts and all that kind of thing. But um, I really enjoyed the aesthetic of it all. It was like a, a, a neat alternative to doing just doing the grim dark of 40K and things. So some very interesting things in the, on the horizon for this, I think. So. Get the bar house. Yeah, get well, onto the moon. They, they said, everybody. yeah, they've said they're going to try and do Bauhaus Imperial um, 
uh, the Brotherhood, and I can't remember. Who, I can't remember. Probably it was capital, Cap, capital was the Capital. Yeah, Americans. Capital was the other one they're going to do, and they're going to try and use them as kind of like a, a basis for this before expanding it out. Uh, they've also said that they're not going to go like huge with like big walkers and vehicles and all that kind of thing. Obviously, Mishima and Mishima and all those kind of factions. Just, yeah. just to clarify, these minis we're looking at now are not the new minis and stuff. No, no, no. no. So, so, yeah, this is, so, new minis don't exist yet. These are the yeah. originals. Yeah. So this is the the Prince August range that I was mentioning before. So um, this is the all the old stuff that you can still get. It's also absurdly cheap <laughs> so if you are interested in picking these up they are they are pretty cool i mean they're old school in the the old schoolest way of saying old school in many regards but they are very awesome looking miniatures very stylistic and everything as well so you could have a lot of fun with these and play around with them i i, I collected imperial when i was doing it in warzone resurrection but i'm really tempted to go down the brotherhood route i think brotherhood looks really cool i love the kind of uh Slightly twisted and weird stuff they've got in their collection. It's uh, it's very cool. So and there's also Dark Legion, of course, as well. So there's loads of stuff. Oh, even worse. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't think you could get lower than Brotherhood than your Dark <laughs> Legion. <laughs> oh yes, Dark Legion stuff's amazing. No, as well, but, no yeah. it's not. But, uh, but yes, it's, it's really cool seeing these. Yeah. I had a fair chunk of Bauhaus, some Capital, and some Imperials as well. So I really like yeah. the aesthetic. Yeah, uh, and Kev, I think, did a lot of the original sculpting for them yeah. in Scotland. Apparently, Mark Copstone did a lot of it as well, yeah. uh, which is pretty cool. But um, as I say, like they're kind of approaching this from the idea that like, you dive in and play the game. They just want you to play. They they just mm. want people to dive in and experience Warzone once again and, and have fun with that, which I think is a really good idea. And again, sort of revitalizing Muted Chronicles for the tabletop, which is quite nice. Um, there is a lot more from that Prince August range, I will say, by the way. So we might look at that in the future as an indie yeah. because oh, they have yeah. some old Lord of the Rings stuff and all kinds mm-hmm. of different things like that through Mithril miniatures and everything. So mm-hmm. we might look at that. But yeah, it'd be really interesting to hear what people's thoughts are, or particularly on this, because like I know that Warzone is one of those, and Music Chronicles as a whole is one of those games that I think everyone's really been into at one point in their tabletop career. <laughs> uh, the interesting so thing will be how close it, they keep it to the, the sort of first yeah. and second edition mm-hmm. as well, because you had, it was very much a skirmish game. You had those yes. mechanics where uh, units or individuals within a, a unit or a squad could do different actions um, because you weren't playing a large scale yeah. mass battle game. You were supposed mm-hmm. to be concentrating on unit actions and, and that sort of thing so it had a much much more granular system behind it uh, and was very interesting play style the problem is people often would just go oh it's 40k but with a different aesthetic yeah. and going, it's really like, no it's very different <laughs> very very different data yeah. in fact the mechanics yeah. are very good i'm surprised we haven't seen them um, so they, elsewhere. They've, they've actually said that they're going to keep the kind of like alternative activation thing hmm. so there's not like an i go you go which is always nice to hear and they're also going to take out one of the things that I think was a little bit sort of, and I don't think everyone quite liked from the Resurrection game, which was those kind of the the cards that kind of like were a little bit of a gotcha kind of thing. They're taking those out so that it goes back to it slightly, but you can kind of, you know the troops on the tabletop, you know what your enemy can do, and there's a little bit of a back and forth with this. That's mainly because Brian said that he doesn't particularly like the sort of gotcha things, so it makes sense, I guess. But, uh, it's my game. But, uh, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> do exactly it, yeah. that game out. Yeah. 100% but, uh, with him on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, it looks really cool. looks really cool. Definitely yeah. interesting to see what else they, they come up with mm-hmm. and uh, how the Bauhaus will look, mm-hmm. especially because you'll like this, Ben. You probably know the, the Bauhaus um, hazards were mounted on uh, dinosaurs. Yes, like raptors. Yeah, yeah. You, you too can have yeah. Bauhaus charging into people on raptors. Yeah. <laughs> I have met like. the I have met the uh, explosive end of many a Bauhaus weapon. So, Good. <laughs> as nature yeah. intended, absolutely getting creamed by my friend who played uh, Bauhaus constantly. But there we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's yeah. what happens when you know you decide to go up against the best people. Yeah, so yeah. That's, what, that, that's, what happens, that's what happens when you choose Imperials and then you don't have a fully fleshed out list. There we go. Oh, 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 well, that, that work as well. Did you have the Spitfire? I had a Spitfire. I gave it to a friend no, of mine. No, it was, great. It was like, essentially like a, a War Walker or a Dreadnought for 40k people out there. Me. And the, the cockpit was just like the front half of a Spitfire with two yeah. tiny little wings yeah. and then big stumpy legs. <laughs> I, had the little, I had the little kind of like little <laughs> mini tanks. They were pretty cool with the little poison launchers on them and stuff. Mm. Cool. Oh, no, but, yeah. We'll definitely have to come back and revisit um, yeah. Warzone as an indie in the, yeah. in the future through Prince August uh, because yeah. they've probably got most of those things in there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 
So, yes, uh, moving on and weirdly going back in time to the 70s and 80s once again, uh, we're Best actually looking is. at uh, some work by Black Sight Studios. So a lot of people will remember we talked about their release of their game Violent Dark um, mm-hmm. a couple of months ago now, towards the end of last year, uh, which was a, um, a cooperative, well, semi-cooperative uh, game, sort of very heavily inspired by the likes of Alien and all those kind of yeah. movies from the 70s and 80s, where you played a crew trying to survive against an alien horde that is trying to infect you and kill you and do all sorts of horrible things to you, scientifically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the game plays out on like a really awesome sort of like two-by-two two, um, tabletops. Very cool, very neat. A little bit like oh. Don't Look Back. It's been designed so that it could be played in very small locations with a, a big bundle of terrain and lots of really interesting miniatures. Nice. They've been expanding their collection a little bit more now and made everything available to retail proper. Uh, and that includes a lot of these new multi-part kits. So there was the crew that you saw previous mm-hmm. to this, which are looking very cool. They come with uh, sort of bodies, uh, legs, bodies, and heads are all separate, separate and that kind of thing. And then you can sort of plug the arms and stuff, which is pretty nice. And you can change the heads around and that kind of stuff, which is really cool. Unlike the, the aliens. Computer. Well, you can do the same on the crew and you can do exactly the same thing on the aliens. So the aliens come all separate so you can make them in all different sorts of combinations and put their arms in different directions and that kind of thing nice. with the lovely ball joints. Everyone loves a ball joint. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I really like that these have kind of got like the alien vibe going on, the xenomorph thing. There's yeah. also tied in a little bit of kind of like tyranny stuff as well, which I think is really cool. Uh, and I love that they actually come in those Super kind of like... Steel. I, I love that they come in those sort of like um, MRE box. style packs. I think yeah! <laughs> it's a really nice, neat way to kind of like package it in a sort of aesthetically pleasing way, which is really mm-hmm. nice. Um, as well as that, they've also done a first expansion for the game. Uh, so Rogue Synths, which again would be very familiar to anyone who's watched Alien and the like. Uh, they've done a new set of Rogue Synths alongside two new player characters that you can take control of. So you've got a synth oh. hunter and a, a and a mercenary as well, which are looking very awesome. And yes, if you want to set your uh, synthetic individuals <laughs> on your crew rather than aliens, then you can do that as well. Which is quite <laughs> how, how happy to have How freak- happy is he? It's uh, freaking me out. That one yeah. in the middle with the open bias. I'm just getting yeah. Pee Wee Herman by it for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so there's the, that expansion set, which is pretty cool. Again, uh, well, sorry, I should say all of these are resin in 32 millimeter, mm. which is pretty nice. nice. And they all come from the States. So there are sort of shipping things and that kind of thing to consider, but it's well worth having a look at. One for you, Free. There's also an entire bag of ships cats. <laughs> Because how could I not talk about this? Did you uh, say ships, cats? Uh, yes, because <laughs> cats are not. Oh, yeah. uh, so these actually, have, they put them together because people really wanted them. Of course. Um, uh, and they don't actually come with bases or anything. They've just been, they're just a bunch of cats in a bag. So you can use them on your other bases and that kind of thing. Like scenic stuff we've seen in the previous uh, yeah. box sets. And stuff. The heck and just, chunker and I know. Lord, he's coming. Yeah, yeah. If so you put them, team up with the Simps and you've got a scary little duo there. The exactly, cats, yeah. Especially they've, that smiley one. They've yeah. caught a lot of the attitude of cats here. So mm. that, one li- yeah. that one line down, just, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just care. kill me. I don't <laughs> you. Yeah. Uh, they've also got a couple of additional sets as well to kind of like help um, sort of add some diversity to the game. Oh, so you've got your vac suits. That's so if great. You, if you want to head out onto the hull of your ship, or maybe there's been a breach within the ship itself mm-hmm. and you want to go and hunt down some aliens, you've got some really cool suits there. Very much, again, feeling that well, that industrial sci-fi vibe yes. uh, and going with the idea that this is modern, but it feels like it's all been done on like a corporate budget, which I think is really cool. Mm-hmm. It's, it's such an amazing... Pads. Yeah. Oh, it's such an amazing idea for sci-fi. Like, you've been set out into space. It's wonderful. But we're doing it on a budget. Uh, and we can only give you so many suits. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Only, only one of you gets a gun. Uh, <laughs> so it's really if you cool. want to go, it's on you. Yeah. Uh, and then there's also this, which I think is possibly my, the coolest set. Uh, so this is the Xeno sample set. And this is a selection of weird alien creatures that have burst out from their hosts. Yeah, great. I, I love how gory the one on the left is, mm. uh, where he's like just breaking out through his skull. And it's, it's no. you could you could see that done in practical effects back in like the seventies. You say breaking out, but I put it to you: there is no blood on top of this head. Oh, that's true. It's inserting itself. Oh, at the that's yeah. how I'm choosing oh, to interpret yeah. this. In which case, then that's even weirder. That's not that, on the way out. Yeah. That's on the way in. Yeah. And then he'll use him like a puppet. Yeah. And then there's yeah, also the way around the, yeah. And around there's also the, the other one who's clearly friends. there's the other one who's clearly weighing himself down so he doesn't float away with the, <laughs> with the aid of a dead body. <laughs> uh, but yeah, some really weird and creepy little aliens to throw into the mix there to sort of 
add some interesting things. They are. In, they in, are in, particularly in, alien. Yeah. yeah. Really like cool. that. Yeah. With their bastards. Just amazing bands. stuff. Yeah. Very cool. You can even use them as like casualty markets and stuff if you wanted to mm. as well. That could be kind of cool. Yeah. Casualty. Yeah. I like them. Yeah. There's some really cool stuff there. Uh, the game is very cool. A lot of people have been playing it, having fun with it. Um, I keep saying cool, but that's because it's in the depths of space and everything's very cold. What is the game called? So the game's called Violent Dark. Violent Dark. Yeah. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. yeah, it's very cool. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. And even if you don't plan on playing Violent Dark itself, you know, there's plenty of other oh, yeah. sci-fi industrial games out there that you can lay them into. Um, Maybe even 7TV? Yeah, 7TV. Yeah. It would be great for that. Oh, my God, it'd be so good for 7TV. <laughs> just play our alien. Yeah. Why not? Why not yeah. do Blade Runner? <laughs> Take your road yeah. synths and do Blade Runner. Oh, that's they've a good got a whole idea. set of Blade Runner miniatures. So if you want to go and check them out, you can go and see. Well, yeah. well Blade Runner miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Uh, but yes, very cool stuff there. Uh, we're going to move on to a little bit of quick news as well now. Mm. So uh, the folks over at Osprey Games uh, uh, have um, worked on the Undaunted series for a while now. Fantastic board game yes. slash card game slash war game. Uh, and now they're working alongside Bookmark Games in order to bring Undaunted Normandy and possibly the rest of them in the future to the PC. So if you want to dive in and play Undaunted online, there's going to be an early access, which is what you're seeing here. So this isn't indicative of exactly how the game will look when it's finally finished. But um, this is going to be a digital ad- adaptation, as you can see there, of the award-winning board game, which will play out exactly like the board game does in that you will have all the same mechanics and everything built into it. Wow. Um, so you'll go through a series of different scenarios. I think there's going to be the 12 in there, that were, oh, sorry, the 10 there that were from the original uh, original game. There's also going to be two more. That's where I got the 12 from, sorry, that have been added in from the folks at Bookmark. Um, you'll be able to play it by yourself just against the computer, which I think is where a lot of people are probably going to give this a go. Hmm. Uh, but you can also play this um, either hot-seating it in on with all of you gathered around a PC, if you like, playing the game, or you could play it online against someone somewhere else in the world if you really wanted to. Wow. You'd get beaten by someone from New Zealand if you really wanted to give this a go. <laughs> um, as I say, uh, they're sort of working to kind of um, faithfully represent the game on the computer uh, and basically just bring Undaunted to more people. Uh, Undaunted is an amazing game. It's really fun. So uh, I can't see why people wouldn't want to give this a shot and, mm. and dive in and, and, and have a go with it because – not everyone can get around a tabletop all the time. And so sometimes mm. you might want to just beat up your friends <laughs> in a digital version <laughs> of the game rather than real life. So, yeah. I like to keep in the original yes. cards, cards. Mm-hmm. as yeah. well. So that's quite so, cute. Yeah. That's yeah. really nice. Yeah, I really like the animation nice. they've used. I saw that they yeah. was when you're destroying something, they've actually visually shot yeah, it and they're destroying I, it. It's, uh, yeah, it's nice I, to say. That's one of the nice things about doing something like this is that it can kind of add a little bit more sort of to the feel of exactly what's happening and that kind of thing, rather than it just being sort of down to your imagination. Obviously, I love using my imagination playing this game in real life, but mm-hmm. it's obviously nice to have a digital outlet for it. Mm. A lot of people have said, oh, this doesn't look very nice. I'm like, well, yes, that's because it's early access. <laughs> so, you know, take some time, dive into this, give it a go. See what you think. They're going to be looking for feedback and everything like that in the that's future. Fun. So uh, keep an eye out for it on Steam. You can wish list it if you want. Uh, which will give you updates uh, via email when it's available for you to go and check out yourself. Um, but yeah, that's there's going to be some really fun stuff in the future for this one. And if this goes well, I would assume they'll carry on and do uh, North Africa in the future. Maybe Stalingrad, Stalingrad, which is coming out later this year as well. Uh, but it's nice that it comes with the solo stuff already baked into it, which is really cool, obviously, yeah. through, through the hard work of uh, of the, the developers who originally brought it to the tabletop. But, uh, but yeah, very cool oh, stuff indeed. It's great news. Very interesting, Mr. Ooh. Bond. No, last bit of news for this week. Ooh. Talking about games being resurrected. Yes. <laughs> How many times this has come back more often than the curry from a piss head stomach? <laughs> so we started with the undead and we end with the undead. Warhammer Quest, Cursed City. Yes, I had to finish to make sure. <laughs> Warhammer Quest, Cursed City is going to be coming back made to order this weekend for two weeks. So it begins this weekend and runs for two weeks. Now, this means that like other made-to-order schemes they've done in the past, if you want a copy, regardless of when you buy one during this two-week period, you will get one. That might mean that your copy comes out a couple of months down the line to your door, but it definitely means that if you wanted to play Curse City, you wanted to dive in and give the game a go, then you can definitely do that. I will also say 
that via store on tabletop you can actually order this through us and we will manage to get it to your door at the same time as well so if you want to copy through us you can definitely do that as well so if you want a little bit of a discount to mundo then you can get that in there in the in the in the, in the car i will say that um whilst this made to order period is going to be running for two weeks that isn't going to be the last we see of Curse City because after that two week period where it resurrects from its coffin and then goes back to sleep again, it's actually going to get a full relaunch later this year. So I would assume that they've been able to, they've been given a window of when they can get a lot of stuff just like sent to them and they're going to try and fulfill as much as they can then. But it's also going to be re released later this year. I would say probably around sort of October, November. But if they're is it like, the same games getting re released? It's exactly the same game. <laughs> yeah. So it's, the only reason. Also, the only reason to get on yeah. the only reason to get on this is if you want it earlier than later this year. Is that is yes. that, the, that yes. the deal? Yeah. This is what they did with Indomitus, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it uh, my, as as I was <laughs> as I was as I was thinking at the start, if you want this, you can get it. It's not this isn't going to vanish off into the ether again after this relaunch later in this year. There will be ample time to buy this game. So if you don't feel like you want to buy it right now, then you can just wait if you want to. I will point out that they have said that they're going to maintain exactly the same price for this as it was pre- in the previous launch. So if you wanted to buy Which it, one of the previous launches? The, the, the first one. The first, first one. one. Okay. So if this won't be affected by the price change that's coming in for Games Workshop. Uh, I think it's at the end of this month or sort of middle of this month. So bear that in mind as well. I will also say that the relaunch that's coming out later this year, after this re-relaunch... <laughs> Uh, it's also going to come back with expansions. So they are going to do exactly what they did for Blackstone Fortress and release expansion boxes for Curse City in the future as well. Now, I've played the game. I've painted all of it. I've played it like two or three times. I've had fun with it. It's very janky games workshop. So it's not on the. It's not up there with like Jaws of the Lion or Descent or anything like that. But if you like games workshop games... I would recommend it if you are interested in the aesthetic and painting it and having fun with it that way. Um, it's it's a very it, if, sometimes if you like games, games. This is one. This well, is one. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Sticks like, the mark. like it's not going to make you think. Core blimey! I wish this would win a uh, you know <laughs> massive board gaming award or an Emmy or something. But if you like games workshop style games that are very sort of like uh, beer and pretzels, chucking dice, having fun, etc. This definitely sort of encourages that, and it's pretty good fun, and it has some really nice models in it as well. They still uh, haven't so. released all the models individually, have they? No. no. So, some so, of them have crept out in other yeah, boxes so, for armies, but if, you, if you're if you wanting the so, complete collection, you have to get these. Yeah. This is what I don't understand. Why don't you just do it as a big release as the first point rather than limited, calls a frenzy, everybody panics making sure they get it. Then you do a limited print run kind of, but not really – where you can make to order, but then everybody else gets it, and at the same time you can get expansion. I don't really understand. Yeah, but then we end up talking about it over and over and exactly. over again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't get fear of missing out. The yeah. FOMO wouldn't kick in, and people wouldn't be buying us. But surely, people no. You're never going to have to miss out anymore. You're never right. going to have to if you just wait and you pay. But you might. Oh, That's the fear. Might. So, <laughs> when they originally released it, they said it was going to be a permanent thing, and then like. Two weeks later, they went, no, it's not. It's gone. No, bye. Sorry. Unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> what? I, I, you can't, no, you know, Games, Workshop will, Games Workshop will never say this, but I would assume they had massive logistic issues when it came to trying to ship the original game. They should have just waited and not released it, basically, would, would have been the way to do it. But they did it and tried to make as much money as they could in one go. Again, we're seeing exactly the same thing here where they're trying to put, they've obviously got enough sort of stock in mm. order to design a bunch of these games and then get them shipped out to people. I would imagine it's a lot to do with the cardboard because <laughs> that's where all that stuff comes in from China and all China. that kind of stuff as well. Plastic's all done in-house, obviously, and all that kind of thing. So all that stuff's got to be shipped over. They've probably got a whole bunch of that and they can try and shift as much as they can during this kind of period. And then obviously they're trying to like crank things up, I guess, throughout the rest of this year. But as I say, if you want Curse City, you can get it. If you don't want to buy it, you don't have to. But it's going to be around for at least the next couple of years if you want to <laughs> dive in. When you're together. talking about the price of it, I assume the later release later in the year will be affected by the twenty percent sort of. I, I don't know about that one. I just know that I just oh, know yeah, that this one, one will be cheaper. So there we go. But, uh, yeah, there you have it. Well, cheaper, the same price. <laughs> if you're after yeah. the Curse City. Yeah. Keep your eye out. Uh, yeah. You've got a little little window of opportunity. Try not to drink all your money on St. Patrick's Day. 
<laughs> Otherwise, exactly, yeah. that wraps us up for the news. <laughs> when we come back, we'll be diving into some 3D printing. And an old sculptor come back from Ooh. the old. Okay, folks, we are back and we're going to be taking a look at some 3D printing. And this week, I found out that Bob Naismith has been tinkering away. And if you're not aware of Bob, Bob, um, you probably should be. Chances are you own, if you own anything made for the wargaming hobby from about 1970 <laughs> <laughs> He yeah. has worked for every company, multiple scales, historics. He's responsible for the very first Space Marine. Do you want to know why Space Marines look like that? Because Bob sculpted it. Oh. You know, it's it's one of those. So he has been um, a veteran, shall we say, of the uh, industry for a long, long time. Uh, and he's got a Yitrian, uh, which you kids are down with, I believe. Um for his sci-fi mainly 3d stuff nice. um how does Petra work i have no idea bob uh hopefully you do <laughs> but, <laughs> but he's doing a variety of things in the, the sci-fi genre from miniatures up to bigotures like spaceships vehicles nice. lifters loaders droppers a uh, whole range of of frippery um to dress your tables uh, that just looks like starbug i love that that's so cute I also like the big captain's chair up front. That's nice. Uh, I will not be spending much time on this Patreon <gasps> thing. Snowpads! That's what they look like. Because these live on his website as well. So you can either back the Patreon uh, to get sort of first access uh, and presumably additional things as well via it. Uh, or if you're old school um, you, and you just want to buy the stuff, well, I say by the stuff, it's still STL files. Um, but if you, if you don't do the subscription model, if you're just after one-offs, then you can go to uh, his website. So, oh, I closed his website. That seems very unusual on the, to me. It's, on the, it's end the, of your tab. the end one, yeah. It's oh, just right, got no icon. That way. That's all right. <laughs> that. I was very confused for a moment because I didn't think I'd closed anything, and I was correct. I just moved it around. So the overrunners... Um, I will browse the range. Thank you very much. Just, <laughs> I just want to put on an 80s music song in the back. This would make a perfect yeah. music video. I, I love this. This has been written for somebody like me. Visit my site, pay for the file, download the STL, <laughs> use your printer or a friend's printer, print the file. Oh, you've got a face finger. <laughs> Thinking about the visual learners they are. <laughs> oh, well, you know, it works for me. Um, so I think I'm going to start with the civilians and spacefarers. Uh, because this is, I think, some of the shiniest of the shiny things live in here. Things like the Andrew bots, or Android bots. You two can fill your tabletop with strange biomechanical things, killing up people. It's an, it's an interesting because he's, he's he did a bunch of like sort of near future stuff, and mm. then it kind of exploded out into sci-fi and all sorts of different things. Has been quite because he's actually been at this for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I th I think he was just kicking it off when everything started closing down. Yeah, during the event. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's he's had a a year or two now to sort of flesh it out. Bar staff. This lady's got a whole tray of Ferrero Rocher. That's how you know this is a classy establishment. Oh, I would have taken. Ambassador. I would have thought they were Scotch eggs, man. <laughs> Scotch eggs. Who knows? I just see that now. How would you, how would you do a part. Scotch egg? Would you block it? <laughs> Get the texture. Yeah, crumbs. Could, could Over the top. Who knows? I, I really like the um, industrial sci-fi type. Yeah. Of look to these guys I think really marines. Yeah. yeah some of the the models like the overrunners and i think like these marines uh they come either as one piece files so you just print them as is um nice. or they have um modular versions of the files as well so you get the legs oh. torsos heads and arms separately so you can print them and then pose them yourself uh for you know your own personal amusement 
I mean, look at those bounty hunters. They look pretty cool. Oh, we'll get to the bounty hunters. Have to have a look at Bartok <gasps> on his disco bike. <laughs> awesome Bartok. Bartok on bike. Dead Bartok in the back alley. Well, yeah, going to the back alley, Bartok. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see someone paint him up as if he's wearing a mankini as well. That'd be oh, cool. oh, actually. Yeah. That just, <laughs> just model a bottle in his hand for the line down. <laughs> just, like, yeah. just got a bottle of JD in that. That's hand. it. <laughs> you could do a progression of when he got to the bar on his bike first and then he slowly started to record. <laughs> That's the end part. <laughs> <laughs> got bar staff could... selling scotch eggs and everything so. yeah uh, all i can think of now is the uh the adam and joe show using star wars figures to do drunk ben kenobi <laughs> <laughs> i love you he's, he's got a scottish accent for no apparent reason a little bounty had towards oh man they're awesome they're cool. is it because they've got a dwarf an angry yes. shouting dwarf <sighs> yeah and a man with a very small back, face Oh, yeah. Very small fierce. I really like the very grizzled guy on the uh, on the left as well. Mm. He's really he's really mm-hmm. neat. And you got a slightly more alien looking one as well from a different planet. Oh man, they've just got Michael. a very big head. I don't, okay. you, know, you can't tell. Cone head. <laughs> Construction workers. I'm not saying that there's a game coming out or an expansion for Stargrave that may require. Uh, sci-fi construction workers but what i am saying is if you play star grave you may want to look into getting some form of sci-fi construction workers and miners in the not too distant future we work hard we play hard oh that's great <laughs> murdered in a pit <laughs> this is what happens when you're a civilian in the future that's a really cool set just a whole bunch of just street folk to use in your games Perfect for the likes of like core space and stuff. Yeah. That is, yeah. But it also looks like stuff that's come straight off of 70s or 80s sci-fi. Yeah. yeah. Probably the 80s with, you know, like the Goo Goo skirts, which I imagine is probably shiny silver. Yeah. Yes. Down to the colors. stuff that looks like it's been dragged out of BBC storage and they've just put some <laughs> piping on it to make it look a bit more like a, mm. uh, a science fiction-y type thing. When your hoods are nice. Hoods are always good. Mm. It's good in the hood. <laughs> Uh, have a look at the crew of the Revenge, shall we? <gasps> because they look like they've got an afro and uh, some sort of space dog. Yeah. Which are the things I look for. Yep. <laughs> See again, very 70s slash 80s. Yeah. Big man afro. Massive, mad, Russian-looking hat on that fella. He's got um, one eye open as well. Well, uh, you know, the other eye might be open, but we'll never be able to find out because the hat's in the way. <laughs> <laughs> An angry, angry bunch of people. Yeah. It's it screams rogue wow. to me. That's, it does. Yeah. I'll skip right to the end. That's page know. one. <laughs> yeah, that's page one of the civilian set. Wow. And you've got things like the uh, the skimmers as well. Nice. Both cockpitted and uncockpitted. If you want to actually move stuff inside. What's good as well is with a lot of this sci-fi stuff, vehicle-wise that he's done, he actually detailed all the paneling as well. Mm. So it's not just big huge chunks of flat texture not gonna paint it on yeah yeah you're not gonna paint anything like just use <laughs> flat flat texture you know what i mean you know what <laughs> i mean what he means. he's just being lloyd again <laughs> god damn you <laughs> <laughs> interesting thing i don't know if it's changed from this but when he was doing the original vehicles for 40k uh rick Priestley told him not to do anything longer than four inches because they didn't want a vehicle that could move faster than a miniature could walk. And that's why a lot of the vehicles were very small, the rhinos, the predators, that sort of thing. So presumably he's moved away from the constraints of um <laughs> of forty yeah. Kisms in scaling. Very interesting. Those would also be very useful for uh Stargrave. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Ooh. That's the noise it makes in space. Wow. His head's about to explode. Yeah. I've I've seen total recall. The good one. <laughs> yeah. You never take your helmet off in space. I wonder whether or not you could do something with those helmets to try and make it look like the glass panes were still in or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wonder how you do that. Maybe little tiny pieces of plastic or something. Well, assuming you're not going to print it. Well, you could presumably print it in one go, mm. yeah. um, and then just use the blister pack. Yeah, purchase, yeah, and then you you can buy clear acetate in sheets anyway from modern just companies, it but it's, it's easier the, just to yeah. to get that and stick it on the inside. 
if you're going to print all in one go, mm, good luck, Skipper. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there are ways and means around it. I just wouldn't be trying it. Yeah. I'll chunk those down. Hello, Astro Buggy. We'll have a look at you. <laughs> we'll also open up the uh, vehicles. So a lot of these things will be replicated in the vehicles anyway. Look at this big doodatty body and massive chassis. <laughs> you want that coming at you over the Martian landscape? <laughs> I put the wind right up you. <laughs> Astro Buggy, not to be confused with Astro Dog. Which was a cartoon character and very different. <laughs> well, it was. I like this. I really like how you can see in. Yeah. Does uh, the top come off that as well? The, I uh, believe it does, yes. Because otherwise, we just seems like he's got the. Yeah, yeah. Go. That's great. Oh, these, are, these are just made for like core space and, and stuff, yeah. Grave. Like yeah. they are perfect set dressing and Infinity. all sorts of different things. You know, Infinity, you imagine right? having that sitting on a, a landing pad, both doors open, run in, hide. That's what they need to hack and everything like that inside. Yeah. yeah. Do them up like a kepper, then escape yeah. on your overrunner assault jeep. <laughs> June bugging about the place like Steve McQueen. Oh, that one got slightly bigger. Nice. <laughs> this turn? No, but I could do that. That's <laughs> <a> driving. <laughs> this website's awesome. <laughs> Shut up. The Clisto car. Oh. Clisto car. Very, I mean, the rock on the back is particularly bizarre, but very uh, sleek and infinity and drag racery. Mm. More um, Blade Runner. In fact, if I imagine you could spin the tires around and make it into a spinner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Point to the bottom. Yeah. So I quite like these. So there's more of the Overrunner stuff. So the Overrunner is kind oh, of wow. his futuristic space brain type force with various upgraded and upgunned bits and pieces. I mean, that's that's an APC. Look at that. Shit. You get 12 men in there. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> by hook or by crook. And if I have to hang them off the back, I will. Are we all big they're, spoon, little spooning? Yes. Yeah, we are. They're, exactly. They're, 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 they're very comfortable with each other. <laughs> That's the joys of being in the military. Yeah. You know, comfort. They thought about comfort and then thought they don't need it. They, no. They've been recruited. They've nobody to complain to. <laughs> Therefore, get in there. Think of them as also being some form of packing material for the other people around them. If they hit a bump or whatever, they don't need seat belts. Yeah. They just can't move. But the overrunner grunter, a bit more heavily armored. It's sweet, sweet like yeah. candy. There's basically an entire army's worth of stuff in there, isn't there? From the Overrunners, yeah, that's, that's one really. of the most recent ones, including the uh, Medivac bikes. And I, I really like the look of these with the little sort of suspensor slash uh, jets on them. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. So you need all the different jets and different angles, otherwise you just crash straight into the ground. So then you paint all of them chrome, and then you do one in candy red, one in green, oh, one no, in yellow. No, no, no. <laughs> it would still look going. better. It would still look better. <laughs> and then pull up in formation. And you do That's it. it. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that was missing was bloody UV lights. Space mods. Space mods are the worst. Uh, I will open the dwarfs, because if I don't open the dwarfs, I'll probably get hit. I can't believe they survived right to the end. I was so disappointed. <laughs> and they'll be they'll be back next year oh. as well. Um, oh, show you some of the overrunner infantry, which I'm pretty sure should also contain the yeah, full pack troops. Yeah. So overrunner heroes. heroes. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have to sing that, but he did. Because it's the Saturday morning cartoon show <laughs> now. So. Yeah. Overrunners saving the galaxy. No. I mean, yeah, why wouldn't you? It's just if you like that. He's just finished his turn on the dance off and now he's pointing at somebody <laughs> else to complete the mode. Oh. <laughs> I I hope not. In a John Travolta in space style. I like the uh, the aesthetic he's given these as well. Yeah, yeah. Because they're they're very much hard sci fi, but yeah. they, uh, they could fit like, so many a games. A little bit sort of um colonial marines, a little bit yeah. Halo esque. Um a little yeah. bit Starship Troopers. Yeah. Great for Dead Zone, for mm. Warpath, or Firefight for Enforcers. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a sneaking suspicion Bob sculpted the Enforcers as well for Mandrake, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think about that. It's the Overrunner Heroes. I won't sing it again. <laughs> oh, that guy's foot's gone wrong. 
Which ones? The guy at the first, his foot. The guy on right, the left. The other right guy on the left. <laughs> oh, my ankle. <laughs> Old Limpy. He's been a, a veteran for years. That leg is just soup. You know, what I've also thought, always thought it would be a really cool idea for a unit. Oh. If you made the medics, the guys with the jetpacks, because what's cooler than shouting medic and then a guy lands from the Just sky? Just <laughs> killing in beside you. Yeah, and then picks you up and takes you away or something like that. Yeah. It's an tar- easy way to target a medic, though. Yeah. There's, an, there's an Imperial Guard chapter they'd be good for. I can't remember what they're called. Austrian Drop Troopers. That's it. Yeah. Elysian. Or Elysian, Elysian. Drop Elysian Drop Troopers. Elysian Drop Troopers. Austrians are the, the Russian oh. guys here. Yeah, so. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. That's Christmas. great. If... If that Santa Claus gives you a cuddly toy at Christmas, you take a cuddly toy at Christmas. Put a cracker on top of his gun as well. That's fine. Yeah, well, his gun is a cracker. And once again, I'm not 100% certain, but I have a sneaking suspicion that this 2000 AD cracker bolt gun space marine from GW may also have been a Bob Scott many, many years ago. So I'm glad to see the, the double ended yeah. cracker coming back as a gun again. Uh, it is, after all, the sign of the times. Mm-hmm. everything old is awesome <laughs> speaking of which there's only a couple of dwarfs but I appreciate the fact he spells dwarf correctly in the uh, the classic fashion yeah yeah now, there's a bike with a bit of yeah. rip what's it um, your man says Here, here's a move with some chest hair <laughs> oh that's an awesome way of doing one yeah that's metal as anything isn't it mm. it's it's one two three four five it's V12 then that you you just see, need- I imagine having those exposed means that you're probably going to end up with a lot of engine failures very quickly. <laughs> but my God, look at it. There's one thing missing, and that is a cigar coming out of his mouth. And then That's true. Yeah, there is something time. coming out of his mouth on is the there? other side. There's something coming out of his mouth on the other side, if you look at him. I love how angry they are. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Can we see it the other side of him. The other side of him. That's the side. The other some, left. What, what is that? Is it a pipe or something? Could be a pipe. Oh, yeah. Something up his pipe, nose. Yeah. You can never tell. <laughs> like, he, will have, he will have a lot of engine fumes going right directly into his face. Yeah, that's so. fine. Mm-hmm. That would yeah. explain why he's got a pipe up his nose. <laughs> oh, man, I love those. They're so cool. Angry dwarfs. Yeah. Angry dwarfs. They are very angry. Mm. They fit quite nicely, actually, with a lot of the macrocosm stuff um, that came out a like, couple of years ago. Oh, quite cool. The drugs. Very true. Scum thugs. <laughs> Uh, a variety of bases nice. and more importantly incidentals so mm. crates scattered land, terrain landing ramp as oh wow nobody's saying blast him that just looks like he stole that off the back end of the Millennium Falcon <laughs> <laughs> and Han going to get out yeah. I really like the space station uh, yeah. pilot oh, set that's as well right. and spaceship walls Great. this is a wealth of stuff yeah <laughs> Bob's that's been fantastic. um Busy during the uh, the event, keeping it all like Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, written five books. Comics. <laughs> <laughs> He's absolutely busted Kickstarter's uh, thing. That was all. Yeah. Look, space critters. Wow, yeah, have those hunting people in the underhive or something? Yeah, keep them away from me. That's some sort of snapping turtle Dagon thing. I don't like him <laughs> or his armadillo. No. If these are who I think they are, these would have been much better Star Wars mods for Boba Fett, I'm just saying. Because, <laughs> I mean, I could see these in Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. Burning around the streets. Yeah. As opposed to a bunch of mods with their tightly fitting suits and their, <laughs> their love of the jam. That's awesome. I love that. Oh, and a farmer <laughs> star. Why has yeah. he only got half a tire? Where's the other half? Because he, he's a jetpacky thing. Oh, it's some. Um, it, it's just an affectation because he's that wheel. kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hang on a minute. Is this one also? Let me do it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, so good. <laughs> so very, very good. Yeah. I mean, look at these. Please pay attention, Disney. If those mods have to come back for the next season, just tell everybody Boba Fett smashed their bikes up. Yeah, because if you look at the speeder, even Ray, 
drives around hmm. in the movies. Why couldn't it be more like that? Yeah, like a big lighter. Big Something big yeah. and weird and not, not looking like it came out of, out of 60s England or 70s England, whatever the mods were about. I can't remember. I don't think that's Wasn't a there. very safe place to put a grenade in my head. <laughs> oh, no, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. I mean, they're not worried. They're, they've gone with the Jeremy Clarkson tie a skull to the front of your grill on your. That vehicle. was the last. That was the last driver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was his last? Was his last rear gunner? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Jim's skull, gone again. <laughs> skull thrugs are always yeah. good. That's really cool. What a nice little selection. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll give you one more. But anything else, you're going to have to go and look for it yourself. And so it's, it's it's all available via Patreon and sort of monthly things, or you can just go and get it all from here if you want. That's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I imagine you're paying slightly more for the commercial release. Right. I've not bothered looking into the individual pricing. Um, <laughs> shut up. It's so mean to me. It's not. I mean. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it means you can you can get them individually but uh, uh, yeah. if you go on the patreon i imagine you'll get them uh in they are very cheaper. they are very saturday morning cartoon oh yeah yeah we must ah, take pear. you will yeah. regret this that's all exciting <laughs> <laughs> i'll you. get you next time <laughs> <laughs> you have seen my patreon <laughs> <laughs> So that really, that is, um, that's what Bob's been up to uh, in in the, the new times, um, getting dove into uh, a whole world of 3D sculpting. It's interesting mm. to see old veteran sculptors as well move into 3D. Yeah, very um, much. Yeah. So I, I, I believe he is not alone. I know Kev's also been toying around with it, mm. so who knows what we'll see from him in the future. But if you're interested in getting into some sci-fi, definitely worth checking out, especially if you like Stargrave. Um, because obviously having access to a load of industrial machinery and, and bits and pieces would be very handy for Last Prospector. It's coming soon. Nods as good as a wake to a blind bat. Did you win one of our prizes? Find out on our prize claim centre over at ontabletop.com. Here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won. If you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. Wrapping things up for this week, we have some Kickstarters to look at, though. We do. Uh, so the first of these uh, we're going to be looking at comes from Blood Forged Games. Blood Forged Games. <gasps> oh, sounds brutal, Ben. Um, so this is a group that we actually talked about to last year at UK Game Expo. We mm-hmm. sort of saw them on the final day and were really uh, intrigued by their design and their aesthetic and the game that they were coming up with. So this is a, uh, a pair of brothers who have put this together. Uh, and it is a uh, small sort of scale skirmish game where you take control of very over-the-top, interesting, diverse, very unique factions on the tabletop. Uh, so the core game of this, for Scythopian Wars, uh, features the Asylumists versus the Confederation. Uh, all of the miniatures that you're going to see in the range are around 32 mil scale, so they kind of mm. work with everything else that exists out there on the market. Nice. But their smallest models are around the 40 mil mark when you see them sort of like standing on their bases and all that kind of thing. So they're slightly bigger and chunkier than a lot of other miniatures out there, which is very cool anyway. Um, the game itself, uh, as I say, is kind of like more, a little bit more of a skirmish affair. Uh, you play as smaller groups of models, maybe up to about 20 in total in some of the starter games you're going to mm-hmm. be playing. And games play out in a similar almost to how we were talking about with Warzone um, earlier. Uh, Very sort of narratively driven, sort of small-scale unit engagements between squads. Very detailed rules for kind of like how shooting and combat work and all that kind of thing. It's not so much a system of, well, I mean, it is in many regards, of like shooting and killing things. Hmm. But it's also, you can sort of knock down creatures and push them over and (laughs) stun them and all all sorts of different things in there as well. So they've done a really good job to try and make this a little bit more involved on that front, which I think is quite nice again feels like a little bit sort of like the old school rogue trader style games on the tabletop um the other thing that i think is really nice about this game is just as i mentioned the aesthetic and the design of all the characters and the different 
uh, factions that we see in the game. So the two ones that you get in the core box, as I mentioned, are the Asylumists and the Confederation. You've got the Asylumists who are kind of like a weird machine cult style thing where they've sort of grafted bits of metal and stuff onto their bodies and they are just out to eat and kill and maim and destroy. On the other side of things, you've got the Confederation who have gone beyond the, they've sort of transcended the use of normal troops in battle mm-hmm. and now instead they use very heavily armoured walkers and stuff. You also notice that there were the likes of um, the sort of like penal legionnaires. <gasps> They're convicts who have been strapped into these suits so that they kind of use them on the battlefield. And you see those like screaming holographic faces on the front of them, which I think is just a, such a cool idea. And again, very sort of in, uh, indicative of kind of old grim dark stuff that you would have seen uh, in sort of like the 90s and the early 2000s, which I think is really mm. nice. Um, the, the actual um, campaign, campaign itself is focused around the idea of bringing the star set to life. Uh, so it's sort of focusing on, again, on those two factions and a bunch nice. of terrain and all the other things you'll need. All the rules for playing the game uh, are available online. Uh, they've also got a bunch of videos where they go through the basics of how everything plays. Uh, they've even got, as you can see here, this uh, sort of tabletop simulator version of the game as well. So if you want to go and check out the game itself and have a look at it, you can find it there. As you can see, this, this is one of the things that's really nice about it, like all the detailed information that you get within uh, the little different unit listings. So the kind of basics of everything is very very similar mm-hmm. to normal games. You move, you shoot, you attack, etc. But it's in the granularity of like what weapons do to each other, how they force them over, how they knock them down, how they can use like um, I can't remember what the, there's a particular term. Is it just force? I think it is maybe yeah. for like knocking over characters and wounding them and making them retreat and all that kind of stuff as well. And then they've tied that into a bunch of scenarios that aren't just your typical just kill nice. style scenarios. Like you were saying, Jerry, about ones that are very much sort of inspired by video game style things, where it's like capture points and all that kind of thing. Yeah, that's really so, right. There's some interesting things game mechanic wise. Can I find their thing again where it showed you the two hickeys at the top? <laughs> where was that? Because the, the activation itself, mm, no, I'm never going to find that again. It's gone, gone forever. <laughs> the, these activations up here, when you're working out your force, um, you have a threat essentially level which is kind of like the points value you're building towards and every unit will contribute an activation token units can be activated multiple times but when you activate you'll put a little marker on them to say what they've done slash can no longer do so so moving we get a little movement token so you could activate something to move but then it's restricted it can no longer do an action that requires a movement to go on it again more complicated or better abilities the the equivalent of um overwatch has all three defense shoot and move tokens added to it so that unit can only really do that once which means while you can do multiple things with one unit you may find yourself restricted in what they can do in subsequent activations and then it's also taking activations away from another unit uh so you've got that style of of uh gameplay where it's it's alternate activation uh, but a reaction to somebody activating as well means that they're using their action for the turn. So, so you don't. In some games, you know, somebody will move towards you and you'll Overwatch and then get your turn. No, if you choose to interrupt your opponent with one of your reactions, then that's your turn and it goes back to your opponent again. So you're always activating alternate units. Uh, and the question is, do you want to stop your opponent from progressing his plan? Or do you want to keep progressing your own? And some of the um, scenarios, there's a scenario where you've got a, a objective point in each deployment zone. Um, mm. Once you've captured it, you get a victory point, but then the unit that's captured it gets teleported back to your deployment zone again in a capture the flag style. So it's first to three VPs win, but it means you can't just put a unit on a fact capture point for three turns and win because they keep getting tunneled away so you have to make sure that you're constantly reinforcing also the the way the threat sort of levels work depending on the the size of game you don't have your whole army on the tabletop to begin with you'll maybe start off with three points and then every turn you'll get a point Uh, and some of them there's like a meat grinder type of affair where if you've lost units then you get the threat back minus one so if you lose one unit you're not getting anything back. But if you lose two or three units, then you'll get uh, one or two units back the following turn. So you're never completely 
wiped out unless you've picked off piecemeal. But if he's only picking you off piecemeal, then really you should be in a position where you can kind of counter. So yeah. they put a lot of thought into the not just the, the gameplay, but the types of uh, scenarios. They're not just the standard take and hold. Mm. Yes, there is take and hold, but when you hold the objective, you don't get your threat reinforcements every turn. So if you've started the game with three units and he started the game with three units and you've gone at each other and you've got the, the control in the middle, so you're getting the victory points, they're getting more reinforcements to push you off and you're not getting any reinforcements at all until you're stopped capturing that. And it's it's that sort of interesting mechanic that they've woven in, which um, makes the, yeah. the game really fascinating to play through. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more of this. Yeah, it looks really it looks really cool. And as I say, like they've got those two factions that they've kind of developed and fleshed out for the use within the Kickstarter yeah. campaign. But there's a whole bunch more as well. You can go over to the website. They've got um, so I think it's four. So there's the host, mm-hmm. the Dracaran, the Order, and the Biosite Expanse are all on the way as well. They're yeah. actually included further down as kind of prospectus stuff that they might work on if they manage to meet their funding goal and, and ex- ex- exceed it as well. Mm-hmm. So. Um, there's some really interesting stuff. And as you can see, like they've put a lot of thought into the way the models work and everything. So they've tried mm-hmm. to make it so they've got the multi-pose options in there, adding a lot of character to the things and sort of the ability to personalize stuff in the, in the way that you see fit. Yeah. But like, you know, we, we talk a lot about the fact that it's, it's really nice to see people working on something that is very different from mm. other stuff out there. Yeah. And I think the stuff that we're seeing from Cytopian Wars, at least aesthetically and, min- and miniature wise, I think is fantastic and very different. Um, and you can clearly see that they put a lot of passion into the project and and what's uh, what's coming out of it as well. So yeah, yeah. De- definitely want to keep an eye on. Uh, there is three weeks left, and yeah, not quite funded days, yet. Yeah. But I imagine, I imagine they'll hit their funding goal. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're well, very so, close to it. So yeah, so it's worth checking that one out if you're interested in something different in the way of sci-fi skirmishes. <laughs> yeah, who's up next then, Ben? Uh, so next up, we're moving to Mantic Games. So Mantic Games have actually been working on a new one alongside the folks at River Horse. Um, so this is for the Umbrella Academy, and the board game. So um, this is based on the the, uh, the hit graphic novels and stuff. Uh, you may recognize it from the Netflix show. A lot of people will remember that one. Uh, but uh, this is decidedly based on the those novels, the graphic novels and the, and the comic books and everything like that. Uh, it's a board game as opposed to it being some, something like a dungeon crawler or something like that that you might have thought might have popped out from Mantic Games, which I think is a really nice change. Uh, uh. In the game, <laughs> too fast. Uh, in the game, you play as the heroes from the Umbrella Academy, and you're tasked with the simple goal, as they say in their trailers, mm-hmm. of saving the world. Yeah. Super um, simple. The way that it works is very similar to games like Sentinels of the Multiverse and sort of Marvel Champions in that regard, where you have different locations around the board, as you mm-hmm. can see there in the center of the table. And on those spaces, there will be hazards as well as things like advantages and all kinds of things like that. Your idea is that you're going to be playing as the heroes and you'll move them around in miniatures form, as you can see there, mm-hmm. to different locations. And then you will use your skill cards that you have in your hand, and they're all very sort of tied to the characters in question mm-hmm. in order to beat those. You can play skill cards to activate special abilities. You can also use them to put down battle tokens. Each of the cards that you see that are hazards have little battle token symbols on them, and you'll need to put the right symbols in the right places in order to defeat them. Uh, Mm -hmm. That means you've got to work together as a team to move around into different locations in order to take them all out. Uh, The other sort of little side to that, of course, is that you're playing as the heroes from the Umbrella Academy, and they are a family that don't particularly like each other most of the time. Yeah. Uh, And so there are are family feud cards in there for when things get mad. Um, Depending on the number of players, you each get little family feud cards in that come out and sort of wreck things that are happening. (laughs) Also, if you don't stop hazards and they manage to tick over during the villains phase of the game, they will then activate certain things and you'll have wound cards and stuff that will go into your deck, making it much harder for you to then approach future hazards and deal with them. The other cool thing about this as well is that it features a whole bunch of different villains, some of them you can see there actually, in fact, um, that uh, all have very different hazard decks that are set up for each of the different games you play. When it gets to that kind of end of the game phase where the Save the World card is turned over, you'll then have to take on the villain themselves in a big showdown at the end. And the different hazard hazard decks and stuff that that have been sort of Playing out cards throughout your game will then affect how that final sort of confrontation goes. Um, it's a really simple and quick and easy to learn card game. Yeah. The actual how to play video is like three minutes. 
The setup video again is three minutes three long, minutes long as well, uh, yeah. and I think that's really awesome for like yeah. a little card game. The other thing that's really nice about this is that I I love that Mantic have gone down this route of we want to try and bring Umbrella Academy to the tabletop. Mm-hmm. We want to try and do something different, and I really like that they've gone down this board card game route with yeah. guys from River yeah. Horse and designed this because I think it really matches the sort of style of the Umbrella Academy, sort of racing around the world, trying to stop lots of things happening all at once. Uh, and it should be a little bit of a breath of fresh air. Yeah. I will say that the deluxe version of this is the one that's available on the Kickstarter page. That's obviously where all the miniatures come in. So mm-hmm. you, you want to pick up all the miniatures. And they do have game effects and things. They are there in place of tokens and stuff. Mm. Um, but the retail version that will be available next year in 2023 will just have the heroes as miniatures and then everything else will be tokens and that kind of thing. So there yes. are some Kickstarter exclusives and stuff in there as well for you to, to dive in and have a look at as well. But um, yeah, very simple, as I say, quick and yeah. easy game to play that should have a lot of replay value to it. Um, uh, I think if you're a fan of the Umbrella Academy, and uh, you want to see that represented on the table. I think this is a pretty cool way to do it. I think I, so. I agree with you. I think with the replayability, like you said, using the hazards a different time you play, they're not always going to appear on the same place on the map, and it will definitely change the flow of the play, as well as the um, villains that are picked. They're designated by hero, aren't they? So you've got a new yeah. gameplay through each different time. It's a really cool idea, and as you said, really simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm, when they were saying they were bringing it out, because I know nothing about the Umbrella Academy, but I've been told I have to... Um, Read it because apparently it's very good. Read, yeah. I assumed that it would be something akin to to Hellboy, Hellboy or something. Yeah. And the fact that they've gone in a completely different direction is interesting. <laughs> uh, and it's it's so, I suppose, stark in construction where you're not dealing with loads and loads of tiles and tokens. You've got a very fixed space, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then it comes down to the the sort of the card mechanics behind it. Uh, it's fascinating because you've got the the mixture of the hazards um but then the family feud cards you get things like if you're in a feud with number five then he cannot move on to the same square yeah. so you can't move in the same square they're on uh so that, that limits where you're at and you have to really work together you do um yes. to to actually win because the, the save the world card is somewhere in the middle of the deck that you put uh-huh. together at the start uh and then when that is reached that triggers the end phase against whatever boss you mm-hmm. happen to be fighting but the deck itself is your timer so if you haven't beat the boss by the time you get to the bottom of the deck then game over you know save the, the world is not saved uh, and they suggest that the first time round, you know play it when you're you can discuss what you're going to do and how you're going to play out your turn uh but because families are all about feuding uh, <laughs> especially the ones from the umbrella academy they say when you get the sort of mechanics down and you get to know the game and get a bit more familiar then how about playing where you don't discuss what you're going to do <laughs> oh i know and you just you know mm, yeah Technically, I think it sounds I really good. On the moon he does. Something, but I don't care because I'm not talking to him right now. <laughs> he can tell me to. He ate so, the last cookie. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, 12 days left on that. <laughs> Another thing they're doing, they're not doing stretch goals. Yeah, so there's a contained one pledge. Added every day or something, isn't there? They're just adding you? something new every day. That's nice. Um, and you can just keep an eye on what's what's coming. But it, it's it's a set. It's a finite game and it doesn't need to be sort of weighed down with additional stuff so we know by the end of it there'll be more than we're seeing currently but none of it's tied to how much money is raised it was it's just a, a way to, to keep people interested so mm. if you're a fan of the umbrella academy 12 days left you can check that one out now finally <laughs> who picked this Oh, who do you think picked this one? Who do, who do you think? Actually, weirdly enough, Ben did. And I was oh, really that's excited that. that Ben picked this one. So it looks really know, cool and I want to know more about it. So. <laughs> yeah, actually, no, you are never short of inspiration on Kickstarter for RPG. So if you're a fan of Japanese animation in like feature length films, like from Studio Ghibli, uh, Zin Never Dies is going to be well up your street. So it combines that stunning Japanese watercolor art style within like a very dark narrative. So we're looking at whimsical fairy tales coming to life amongst a dying world. So the land in the RPG is called Jinza. And within Jinza, uh, we will find a magical source called Zin. And Zin has been around for an age. Uh, Once inhibited, tried to work closely with the source, but it didn't go down so well on their part. So now this world is full of nature-inspired inhabitants that live in the diverse world. So but they stay hidden. They stay hidden inside from gods and dangers 
especially those who want to go off into an adventure. So why would you ever want to go outside? So gods have earned their name. They are colossal. They only visit the world about four times a year and the inhabitants have no idea why they're there. However, they are a bit hurt that they could be doing something about the horrible world in which they live in and the fact that they live in hiding, really. They appear, they disappear. To the villagers, it's better just to stay away. So what are you going to do in this adventure? You're not going to stay away, are you? No, you're going to throw yourself into a world of discovery. So you're going to do one of those no good rotten adventurers and we're going to shame your village that you're from. So it is shameful to be an adventurer, a dreamer who lives to confide in dark and dingy places away from entertainments of gods. But journeying off into discovery is exactly what you have. It's exactly your first. So this is a narrative-focused RPG where players hope to harness Zin. So it is players' righteous duty to break free in the open world. They're going to journey out to different towers that are scattered around the map to discover the power of Zin. So this means controlling and manipulating the power and aiding in the flourish of the civilization. So away from the gaze of the gods. We don't know what they're doing, but I'm sure we will find out the more that you venture in time. Depending on what tower you visit, you're going to find a range of different abilities to harness. And it completely depends what ability you get, depending on what your will is standing at. There's plenty of enemies willing to stop you on your tracks. There's spirits wandering to keep the world completely unhinged and unbalanced and in the current state. So as Jerry's looking at there you got access to seven different species to play there. So you can wander in with a Very human ones, yeah. with antlers, a fable and feline, the one that blew my mind, suits, which are slugs in armour. <laughs> I spent far too much time pondering how slugs That's would fare brilliant. in a knight set of armour. I just imagine them sitting straight up like this with no necks, you know, because they're not exactly got <laughs> um, Anyway, I digress. Uh, there's small conniving mask. You've got nooks, harden. And tower dwellers. So they're all animal themed species with their own unique abilities. There's stretch goals going on at the moment on the campaign. They're unlocking new species as well. They unlocked the Hecker recently, which look Egyptian inspired, Egyptian bug inspired, and new adventures that are being added, as well as extra art to supplement the world. So, as I said, it's very narrative driven. It uses the fit in action system. So, any combat and any dice rolling that you do in the game feeds the adventure and the story that goes ahead. So there are different pledges that you can tap into. You can get a physical copy to add your digital library, or you can get a hard cover to add to your shelves. But there's loads of different packages available depending on how high you go on price with the deluxe edition ETC. And you can get extra artwork, signed copies, adventures, loads. So if you do, just as to where Jerry is uh, on the campaign page, you do want to give the world a play test. You can see if this is up your street. Mm. There's a free quick start guide to dive into as well. So this has got rules, mechanics and artwork just to introduce you into the world. So it does look like a really, really cool one. A real adventure field uh, journey. A really good RPG for me. Which looks damn adorable. I'm like, oh. the, thing, the thing that really got me, I like the, um, the system they've gone for alongside the aesthetic because it feels like it's that fitting mechanic seems really cool so it's d20 based mm-hmm. as you were saying and so yeah. it's all very like i guess i guess the, the word would now would be all the phrasing would be like fail forward in that regard so like you do something but it either goes incredibly well just about as you'd imagined or yeah. very badly <laughs> so you smash the door down but maybe you you then trip over the bits of the door and then go tumbling into the room or you do it and you knock over the person on the other side and that kind yeah. of thing. so it's really cool actually it also seems very deadly at the same time actually, it well. does it does have as i said that kind of fairy tale aesthetic but it just seems dark and brutal at the same time yeah. very very studio ghibli like i suppose yeah. but uh, i assume they called it zin never dies just so they can have z and d as the, uh, <laughs> the abbreviation that's very good <laughs> That's you know. very good. There. Yeah, there's 20 <laughs> days yeah. when you see this one. There should be about 20 days left on that. Different campaign. stuff. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of fans of that, I suppose, style. It's not really a genre, is it? It's more style. Yeah. That, yeah, that uh, want to give it a, a go as some sort of slug suit of armor on the tabletop. Then, yes. you know. Who wouldn't want to give it a go? 
be Being there dead, be a rectangular yeah. sign. Those boots will be horrible when he takes them off. <laughs> this is what I, I've honestly, there's been far too much time in my head thinking about slugs in armor, just about how it works, <laughs> them sitting up. It's too much time wasted. Well, I don't know. There you have it. If you want to deal with the slug in armor, then you need a handful of salt. That'll teach it. <laughs> Not so clever then. Once its armor rusts and it can't move, uh, it just boils to death inside. I'm a terrible yes. man. Yeah. <laughs> And that wraps us up for another week. If you want to be able to chance to win that big one player starter set of the new Conquest Old Dominion, don't forget to be a subscriber. Hop a comment below. Uh, bung me some money. You'll, you'll get it. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be back on Sunday on tabletop.com for the XLBS, where we just have a gentle wander through our hobby. And who knows who we'll have with us this week. If you aren't a member, you can get a 30-day trial. Join us, see what's going on, see the hobby tips from Jerry. He's awesome. He's my favorite one. Let us know what you think, and otherwise we will see you again next Friday for more of the same. Until then, have a great week of gaming. Bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on. <laughs>